here we got someone's lying. Oh, come on. Bro, then you had the constitution. America, Wait, let me try more. Go ahead. Your mouth's way on. Your absolute mouth's way. I vaccinate you. Absolutely oh, not. All right, here, the here, here anyway, come the questions people are asking. That I'm not pro vaccine, that I'm not pro medicine, I just believe pro evidence. Somebody who wants to get, for instance, mercury out of fish, he's not anti fish. Explain the difference between ingestion and injection. Damn freaking diet coke right here. So if you stay away from coke, then stay away from vaccines. That's what you're saying? I've got a gift for you. Dean Show, Dean Show. <laughs> It's nice to uh, hook up with you and, and talk about uh, a very important topic that uh, you actually uh, have been talking about for some time. And for people that don't know, you're a, a professor, teacher, teacher at the El Maghrib uh, Institute, correct? But yeah. you, you also have a lot of stake in the game. You're a pharmacist, I do. right? You're, I, do. You're, I do, yeah. You're someone who, uh, tell us about that. So yeah, I'm a, a pharmacist. So I read pharmacy um, at university, and then I went into. When you read pharmacy, then you can go into different uh, uh, specialities. You know, when you think of a pharmacist, normally, it's uh, you know effectively the one who dispenses, checks your prescriptions in a neighborhood kind of pharmacy or shop for all its and purposes. Then you've got a small percentage that go into manufacturing and industry, which is what I did my first year, and then those that go into. Um, um, uh, quality control, making sure that you know uh, injections and uh, uh, IV preparations are, are are good and above above board. And then those who are clinical, which are those who are based in a hospital, that would accompany doctors um, and uh, deal with uh, various units. Myself was the neonative, uh, the, ne the neonatal intensive care unit. That's where I did my training. So I'm a clinical pharmacist in terms of my qualification. But I did I done it all. And then I also was involved in medicines. Um, never vaccines per se, and I, obviously that's, that's big money, big big business that is. But um, uh, medication, I had my own um, uh, cream. I had a couple of my own products as well that were marketed abroad, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah, I've got my fingers in when it comes to pharmacy and medicines um, across the board, from community to clinical to manufacturing. So I guess that's right. And then obviously from an Islamic point of view. Um, my Islamic qualification means that I will uh, teach and speak about medication uh, in principle, the Islamic point of view. And then, of course, Islam has a, I don't want to say that greater emphasis because clearly from the Western or the secular side, there's a huge emphasis in the right places on holistic medication, whether it's non-systemic or not, not ingested, such as, such as acupuncture or such as cupping, which is pre-Islamic by, by thousands of years. But then also, Holistic, it's another big push for uh, more kind of a healthy living, something that you've obviously been promoting for a long time. That kind of thing is very in line with the Islamic side. So I guess I could say, I could argue that when it comes to medicines, I will come at it at every possible conceivable angle. And that's the beautiful thing about our deen. And I'm sure a lot of people who are not yet Muslim, non-Muslim, whatever you want to call it, you know, would tune in and see what these Muslims have to, you know, say about health and vaccines and all these other things. And and Islam is a, a, and then also maybe learn a little bit about Islam, you know what I mean, from our conversation. And what got me motivated uh, years ago to talk more about this is is to bring to the table the discussion about health, you know, and I started to bring out experts, just like, you know, I wanted to share the Dean, this beautiful way of life. So I brought on experts, you know, scholars and, and pe hear people's stories and to clear much of the fog, the misunderstanding, much of the the misinformation and a lot of it was deliberate and, and let people judge for themselves what Muslims are, what Islam is all about. But then also health, you know, it's a part of our health. We have uh, uh, so many, as you know, you know, Hadith talking about the thing that people take for granted the most time and, and health. Right. And what good are you? What good am I if our health is declining? You know, how are we going to get out there and how are people going to get out there and make a difference in the world? So I started to bring on to motivate us to get the Coca-Cola's out of the masjids. Right. So, <laughs> You know, to start, start. Uh, hey, I'm Diet Coke, man. Don't, we're gutted, man, that Trump has been kicked out and he lost his Diet Coke button. We're gutted at that here in the UK, man. That was amazing. Uh -huh. Biden, the first thing he does, man, he gets rid of the Diet Coke button. Can you do something else instead of get rid of the Diet Coke button? Ah, through the heart. Carry on, bro. Yeah, so so we wanted to. I for my personal journey, I saw that you know I was uh, really into working out, martial artists and that. But I was just eating whatever I wanted to eat. I thought that was you know it was okay as long as I was working out. But then I lo and behold, you know, going to the doctor 
and just, you know, demanding the antibiotics, you know, give me something for it. You know, you're convinced a uh, pill for every ill, but then lo and behold, these things, you know, at the end, other problems start coming up and the, you're not getting to the root of the problem. And then you see that, man, Allah SWT, God Almighty Allah has given us these beautiful taibat foods, you know, that really, you know, make a difference. You know, and then you see the science behind the foods and you hook up with, you know, uh, uh, people who specialize in this, and then tremendous thing happens. You know, you watch uh, documentaries. I, I don't know if you ever seen uh, "Fat, Sick, and Almost Dead." You, you remember that one? Isn't that uh, amazing? You, you remember that, right? It he, is amazing. He, Absolutely, is amazing. He, he's on like twelve. You know, I want. I want to comment on that as a Brit. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, I, I don't know how many Brits you have on your show, but that would also be interesting if the majority of your viewership is American. Then that will be an interesting uh, uh, corollary. That. From our point of view, from the Brits, and maybe I can even argue a lot of the rest of the world, or maybe the rest of the, a, lot of, a lot of the rest of the developing world, maybe you speak for Europe, maybe not look, maybe not for this the more natural kind of East. But when we look at America, one of the interesting things that we notice is that there are certain historical developments and practical geographical realities about America that very much shape this attitude to everything you're talking about today. So for example, and a pill for every ill, Right. This is, frankly, in the UK, which obviously has a national national health service, right, where you don't pay uh, essentially, well, not directly, indirectly, of course, but not directly pay for your health care, unlike in the US. In the US, you can understand the, the skepticism, the cynicism towards doctors and them wanting to make money um, because, you know, they've got to be shown to be giving something back if you pay for two, three hundred dollars to see a guy for a few minutes and then you don't even get something out of it at the end of it, you feel like cheated. So, you know, there's a that's going to eventually play on your psyche. It's going to develop a certain state of mind. Here, if you can imagine, uh, m much of the National Health Service is based upon the principle to try not to give actually medicine. Now, that's not because they are high and mighty and moral and ethics, but just the finances of the matter, right? So you will see a vast difference between when you go for private care, and I, I've used private care and I know about the private care scene, even though I'm in the UK, but the National Health Service, which is where I work in and I've used most majority of my life, my family's life, right? There is a big difference. And it's no surprise that doctors and pharmacists, even themselves as being the kind of, you know, the proponents of medication are the ones who use medicines least themselves. And they will be trying their very best to get people not to be taking antibiotics. We're very big on antibiotic resistance, for example, or because of the overuse of antibiotics, cold season, flu season, people come, give me something for this doctor, give me something for that doctor. Hey, bro, this is a viral infection. You can't cure it. You can't cure a viral infection. We don't have a cure for it or a, a medicine for it. And me giving an antibiotic for a bacterial infection is not going to help a viral infection. So we actually have a very different philosophy because of our finances, our politics and so on. Whereas in America, you can understand people being super cynical. It's not Pakistan. It's not where my, my ethnic background is. People are very, very suspicious when they go to a doctor and doctor writes them out a whole load of medicines. You will see them go and negotiate all the time, by the way, with the pharmacist when they take the, the prescription in and say, what do I actually really need here? What, what actually do I really need from this? And, what, and you will negotiate with the pharmacist 10%, 20% of what you were given in the first place. So that has an impact. And then in America, you guys have the ability to hunt, go out and eat fresh food, massive country, crazy kind of scenery. Once you've tasted nat natural, proper food, you're, like, you're a country that can produce virtually everything, not a little useless island like us have to you know, import everything, right? Okay. You guys make your own food. You've got people who grow their own food, lots of, you know, rural size, farm size. That has an impact because people see it working. So it's not just theory and crackpot ideas that I'm going off the grid. Yeah, if you said I'm going off the grid in the UK, we think that you've lost your mind. In the US, it's a very real thing. Add to that the fear of big pharma, big government, don't want to, you know. So it actually fits very well in America, a lot of these kind of uh, mindsets and ways, which the rest of the world can sometimes unfairly, if they don't understand this development, not kind of get to the crux of and understand why their cynicism comes or where their criticism comes from. And I, I'd like to discuss that a bit later in the program, yeah. Yeah. So you can see where we uh, then I, I had, you know, watching documentaries like that and others and then talking to uh, to doctors, kind of doctors who are uh, I kind of compare it to like, let's say you have uh, someone who finished a madrasa or let's say specialize in one little area, but then someone who went and studied, let's say all the madahib, right? 
and just is open-minded, you know what I mean? And his mind is because we have to be always learning. So then you have doctors who, because as you know, you know when I ask and when I learn that doctors in medical school, this is just a fact, they don't learn about nutrition. Is that correct? Right? You know that. Absolutely. Absolutely. But then there's, doctors, then there's doctors that go out and so they graduate from the uh, traditional medical schooling and then they go out and they still continue to learn. They learn nutrition. You know? So I bring on doctors like this and we talk about, you know, we talk about these things and then always somewhere in the equation, you know, because it's big here, there, everywhere is the, the topic of vaccines, right? That comes up. Uh, so then now I, I wanted to I wanted to put for some time we've been trying to get, you know, two parties together. Now, my, I myself, uh, I'm not uh, anti-vaccine. I'm not, you know, because I don't like, you know, and many people, they put these labels. You know, you get these lab anti-vaxxer, this, that, and the other. But then you have, you know, people who are just sincerely trying to, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm for safe, you know, like somebody who wants to get, for instance, mercury out of fish. He's not anti-fish, right? Nice. <laughs> so nice. You, want, you, want to, you want to make sure what you're putting in your body is safe. It's truly safe. So you have uh, people who question certain things and then they get labeled, you know, and you have a lot of lot of family members who are just, you know, pro all the way, blindly following, you know, the doctors. And then next thing you know, they lost their child. And it's not one case, two cases. These are thousands of cases. So you have really uh, a lot of parents who are concerned. So we wanted to get to the bottom of things and, you know, and invite someone, a, a doctor from this side, a doctor from that side, a specialist from this side, that, and just to talk, to kind of get to the, you know, to, to the nitty gritty and really to find, ask those questions and see where, because our, our dean encourages us to learn. So I wanted to, I almost had something set up. You convinced me, you motivated me that it would just be me and you. But I thought it'd be interesting to have you. I had Dr. Sherry Tenpenny. She's one. Of, she's a medical doctor, board certified, who had 40,000 uh, 40, hours of research. Uh, and I thought it would have been really just nice to see you guys. Not you know. And I was really serious about just us together asking questions. And you know, you can agree to disagree on some things, but let the audience, those who are sincere, you know, really looking, let them to evaluate, you know, to use what Allah SWT gave us, God Almighty gave us of, of our brains to look and to dissect and to see, you know, where the truth is. You know, so so, as, I, as, and as I said to you, um, that's the theory. In the real world, there are no people at this moment in time that are, inshallah, in the middle, that are looking to see the rights and wrongs or whatever. As you, as you said, people are incredibly polarized. Um, I never over many, many years of dawah, me and you are of the same generation, uh, 20, 30 years in the game, I never saw any benefit come from any debate. All I saw was people coming off with an incredible adrenaline buzz, people yani, really on a high, their side has won, and that is not conducive to my, uh, my intention. Like, for example, my intention here very clearly in this uh, conversation is, and I've given, I think, two major public presentations on this thus far, focusing on different things each time, also focusing on different vaccines each time. So now Pfizer, AstraZeneca has been covered, Moderna has been covered, principles for Tawa, whatever. One of my main aims in this one, I would argue, uh, is, uh, or, I, or in my head, that's how it's working out, is I want to show just how Islamically this mindset uh, is a problem that develops the pandemic narrative, the um, the anti everything, this extreme skepticism that we're finding, and whether that fits with our profile as practicing Muslims, um, that is something which I do not see conducive in a debate versus vaccine, non-vaccine, blah blah blah. Like you said, you don't describe yourself as an anti-vaxer. I also very much do not describe myself as a pro-vaxer. In actual fact, um, other than AC ACWY, which is the meningitis vaccine, because I lead Hajj and Umrah groups. Um, other than that, the COVID vaccine is the first vaccine that I've taken in donkey's years, right? Um, and I spoke a little bit about that. Maybe we can uh, discuss, the, you know, the, the, the approach to different yeah. vaccines and whether we should see them differently. Because they, when you talk to people on, you know, on other side, like myself, I would say, you know, I'm for Taib, Taib vaccines, if there's such a thing, you know what it means? Uh, uh, and there is such a thing, right? Yeah. Because you know, a lot of people have got to be careful, right? Um, as you said at the beginning, you know that there are people who just want to just try and find out. And not everybody is a hater, not everybody. Although right now, my biggest problem are those who spread lies. And that's unacceptable and fabrication. And that for me is a very, very personal thing because ultimately, uh, uh, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, listen to this, if, forget about you and me. 
if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not obligated vaccines upon a person, right? How can we say anything against a person who then says, I'd rather not, and I'd rather X, I'd rather Y. Our problem is those people who spread fabrication and lies. That's a major, major problem. And Islamically, Muslims can never yeah. stand for that. Um, and when it comes to Tayyib, um, as I did in the first lecture that I gave on this, uh, we are Muslims, are the developers of the concept of vaccination. Inoculation came with us. I mean, yeah, the Chinese had a kind of basic primitive form. But when it came to smallpox and the attack on smallpox, Muslims are the ones who dealt with it. The Ottoman Empire are the ones who smashed it. And then it was taken by Edwin Jen Edward Jenner and it was turned into, you know, the official form. But all of these vaccination schemes, they were as tayyib as it comes. If you are defining tayyib, pure and good, purely from an excipient point of view. And this is the problem, definitions, right? If you think that tayyib, right, because normally when we have the discussion of halal tayyib, this is, we understand that those who are uh, switched, uh, switched on understand that food just can't be halal. You can't, yani, you know, keep a, 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 a sheep or eggs or chickens locked up in a thingy and destroy them mentally and socially and, you know, hormones all over them and feed them all nonsense and just say, Bismillah, Allah Akbar, and <clears throat> that's uh, halal now. Food has to be tayyib. Animal needs to be treated as adam. There has yes. to be no fear. There shouldn't be stuff full of antibiotics and all the rubbish that we, we do. So that's how people normally understand the, the dichotomy of halal and tayyib. We want both. We want yani, yes. healthy halal food. When it comes to vaccines and medicines, we can't be so lazy. It's a different uh, uh, paradigm. What do we mean by tayyib? Do we mean anything in addition to the actual uh, active ingredient? Well, that's just not going to be possible in the modern world today. It's just mm. not possible to just transport around a inactivated or a mild form of a virus, a natural virus, and give it back like the Muslims started off with. You start off small scale where you take a pustule of the actual infection and you reinfect at a smaller level, which is inoculation. That's as tayyib as it gets if you are defining tayyib as no mercury, no ethanol, no eggs, no, because there's nothing. Right? It's literally you're taking the same thing and putting it back in. But today, if we were to use that, then actually we can't eat anything, we can't drink anything, we can't take any medicine because it's not possible just to have the pure active ingredient by itself. It, you know, the idea of aluminium, for example, a lot of discussion that aluminium is a poison and a, and a metal that, you know, etc. It's an adjuvant. Aluminium, like it is in our natural body, like it is when it exists in food as well. It, its function is not to be it's not its function is not to be eaten or swallowed in of itself. It's part and parcel of ensuring that the other thing, the second, the primary thing, is getting to your system or, or 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 whatever. So it is important for us that our lofty principles, our ethics, which are really pr uh, focused on tayyib, does not cloud our mind to think that we have the same concept of tayyib in food, in vaccinations, or in vaccines, or in medicines, or in other fields even. You know, part, parts of life. So you have people here who classify themselves as pro-science, they're for safe vaccines. First of all, you started out by introducing his anti-vaccine, which I'm not. People say I'm anti-vaccine because they don't want to have the argument with me about how to improve vaccines. And um, I'm not anti-vaccine. I'm, uh, I'm, I believe we should have safe vaccines, and I believe we should have robust science, and I believe that we should have independent regulators who are not financially tied to the companies that make our vaccines. You know, pro common sense, you know, and even you see people who, many doctors who will come and they, they're, they just want to, let's say, delay the vaccine. They want to spread them out. So we've seen an attack even on those people who just go against the, the schedule and whatnot. So let's start off with this. So you do have, we, uh, people would agree that, okay, uh, like you just said, that if they've done the research, uh, because we see also this demonizing where people say, uh, uh, well, you, you'll, see, you'll see people like make a fringe element of people uh, as if they represent, you know, what this group of scientists, doctors is representing. For instance, I'll give you an example. They, they'll come out and say, oh, you think you're going to take this jab and turn into a frog? You know what I mean? Some are just some ridiculous statements. Maybe someone said that, but it's just way out there. But you do have, we have to admit, you do have qualified virologists, immunologists, you know, um, scientists on, 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 on this other side. And those are the people we're trying to get to talk. So I guess that's the first question. Why is it 
that you know my my guest that I had last time she even they even put up a hundred thousand dollars they had a backing of a hundred thousand dollars to get people to step up and let's have this dialogue if you they're they're, they're saying so now I'm going to be the skeptic okay I'm going to be the person look because I'm in the middle you motivated me to come and just me and you so I kind of like I'm in the middle right so I'm I'm saying this is what the, the, the other side is saying you know so don't have me as picking sides. I'm just the skeptic here. I'm saying I'm trying to relay the information. It would have been nice to have someone so they can just speak directly. But now they're saying, why don't they debate? Why don't they come up? If they, if they feel like we're the, they're the quacks, if they're the anti-science, if you have truth on this side, you know, like we in Islam, we have, and here's a mixture. People can, we're doing dawah at the same time. We have Tawheed, for instance. Let's talk. Whoever it is. Tawheed, when God Almighty says in the Quran, when truth is uh, thrown against falsehood, falsehood by his nature is weak, is bound to perish. So if you're on the truth, let's talk about it, you know, but let's have some perimeters, not to insult, not to defile. Let's be academic about it. So th I guess that's the first question. Why? What's the, f on, on this side, they won't even come and have these deb debates and talk. Which to me speaks volumes, because if they are so right and so sure that they are so right, wouldn't you love to have an opportunity to take Dr. Sherry Tenpenny on a public stage in front of everybody and put a heel of your boot to her neck and bury her once and for all? Because the thing is that to shut it down, there's no reason to. If, if, if you're a scientist, let's see, let's hear. Everybody doesn't seem to want to hear much about it. It's shut down. And you guys are the ones that should be the investigating. Do the investigating. So from my side, I can tell not, you... With not the you, I'm saying... I'm saying yeah, yeah, no, I know, but I just want to say something. From my side, I just want to say straight off that I never knew that they offered hundred thousand. They give me a hundred thousand dollars, yeah. I will be there tonight, not even next week. You tell that person of yours, yeah, who said a hundred thousand dollars. You never told me a hundred thousand grand, hundred grand. Come on, bro. Okay. Hundred grand. I'm there, bro. Put my name down. It's signed. That's the answer to your second, your first question. Beautiful. Second question, bro. I ain't doing it for free. I'm not going to go waste my time against a person that I know is going to waste my time. And that's, that's, that's the reality. Debates, as I said to you before, if we're going to be serious, I never, there's a big difference between the establishments of evidence and the, 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 uh, refu the reputation of uh, falsehood and of, w of what we consider falsehood without any disrespect. Especially when it's something which is well done many, many years, like uh, uh, ten, uh, Dr. Tenpenny. This is not something new. She's not a, a COVID denier. She's someone who has history, understands the concept of vaccinations and has an opinion of vaccinations. She's not changing that opinion. She's not going to, just like I'm not going to change the opinion of vaccinations on the science. COVID did nothing, by the way, for my pro or, or anti vaccine approach. I've never been a massive fan of medicines, full stop, right? I take very little medicines. So nobody was going to come and make me take medicines anymore. I teach the, the, the subject of medicines. I am a promoter of the opinion that it is only permissible. Many scholars today are, it's obligatory to take medicines. Medicines save people's lives. As a medicines expert, I know what medicines do. Medicines aren't as rated as people make them out to be. So I don't need to have a discussion or a debate with people who are trying to teach me that which I already know. There's a big difference between the, the platform of debate, the platform of debate being uh, uh, used to uh, reach uh, someone's objective or a particular objective versus that which is trying to benefit people, that which is actually trying to uh, 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 reach the truth per se. But let me just make it clear. A hundred grand makes that whole concept, yeah, very murky. I would completely throw that to the side. Um, tell your friend, whoever it was, or your guest, I'm ready for that. A hundred percent. Okay, let me get more details on that because they get were, more details on I, that. I don't no, know. I don't know if that was qualified. Like, I don't know if that was specific for like the Paul Offit. No, don't you if, even <laughs> think about backtracking now, bro? This ain't no Chicago behavior, bro. Gotcha. This is how we do it in England. When a man says his word, it's his word. Okay, a hundred grand, I'm so, ready, bro. Uh, Off my side, I'll give him a chocolate bar. Okay, hey, Doctor Sherry Penny, if you're watching this, we're gonna have. Well, she's be back on the show soon, so uh, she's we'll gonna be getting the back. message for you. Okay, so now look, here's an example that's given. It's like. Would you, so we get to the root of the matter because you have science here, you have peer reviewed studies, you know, on both sides. And now one side is calling out the other saying, and we're just having a heart to heart trying to get to, to, to the bottom of things. But what, what, I, what I see potentially maybe is one side missing something, you know what I mean? Uh, the whole spectrum of the, of the matter. For instance, uh, let's, go, let's go to this question. Now, if you knew that someone was a, like a, 
I don't know if you've heard of uh, Bernie Murdoch. Oh, yeah. You know him. He swindled yeah, people yeah. out of billions of dollars, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. Know, or the yeah, mafia yeah. or someone who was a serial felon. Now, they use four companies that make all of our vaccines, all 72 of the vaccine shots that are now mandated for our children. Every one of them is a convicted serial felon. Axo, Sanofi, Pfizer, Merck, in the past 10 years, just in the last decade, those companies have paid $35 billion in criminal penalties, damages, fines, for lying to doctors, for defrauding science, for falsifying science, for killing hundreds of thousands of Americans knowingly. And right, would you, with this person, his track record, knowing that he has skimmed, scammed people, would you invest your life savings with this person, money, financially? That individual? Of course not. People like that, and a person no, like no, that. No, no, yeah. no, not people. Of course, of course I would, because people are not represented by a person. Yeah. And this is the issue, Eddie, yeah. okay? This is why this conversation is an absolute humiliation for Muslims to discuss. You see, non-Muslims, no problem. I would discuss with non-Muslims this concept because yeah. from their principles, which are very limited in scope, are secular in, in basis, not based in the divine, where our set of principles and our methodology, our manhaj, is entirely different. We do not judge a system or a belief or a group let, or a people. Yeah, let me actions. let me just finish the let me just fin you know the sure. question you know what I'm so you know you know what I'm getting to this is what because this you're, is you're, what you're the contention that obviously there are certain people that are important that are representatives of certain so, fields so, yeah, that here's, have been here's what, to be. Yeah, here's what they're saying. What what's being said is that so now if we wouldn't trust you know, our life savings to uh, a criminal organization. Now you have, for instance, you know, the four major uh, pharmaceutical companies who are serial felons. They have serial been- Serial criminals, they, absolutely. Okay, so- like I, like I explained in my first lecture, yeah. Pfizer. Pfizer. And it's- Absolute most corrupt, uh, 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 well, and, and we're, so we're not we're, we agree we're not talking about someone i mentioned earlier for for people when i said tawhid i forgot to mention that's the pure monotheism you know because as muslims we only worship one and only one god the same way jesus moses and abraham did so that's what i was talking about the truth is clear in this matter but now we also have toba if someone you know there's no blood sacrifice going through anybody this that and the other you go directly to your creator uh so if you made toba if you repented right you could see the worst you know the best in the or the worst in the deen become in, in the, the dunya can be Become the best uh, deliverers of truth. So we're not talking about people like that who have made a repentance. You know what I mean? We're talking They're about celebrating their criminality. They're exactly. So that's oh, the yeah, point. Yeah, how do we trust? This is, this is my point. This is this how do is we trust? Point. As you said, let me just finish this point. Things. How do we trust serial felons? You know, with our children, with our health. These are not moral companies, and they only got busted because plaintiffs' attorneys could sue them. I agree. They and they got the, the, the discovery documents and walked them down to the U.S. Attorney's Office and said, hey, there's criminal behavior here. That can never happen in the vaccine space. You can't sue them. There's no discovery. There's no depositions. There's no class action suit. There's no multi-district litigation. There's no interrogatories, nothing. They never get caught. You know what I mean? Giving them a blade. That's we the don't. Yeah. And that, we don't. Neither Islamically do we. And neither does the world of science now if once a in an independent individual let alone an independent body or an advisory body or a national regulatory agency or re re regulatory standard bodies do that and they are the ones who are taking responsibility and absolutely so that's what something which we demand and then the other side then come back and say well actually they are all individually linked. You saw this person do this. You saw this person do that. And he used to work with this. And he used to work with that. And so on and so forth. If we're going to... If we, if we believe that character assassination has to be the asal, has to be the basis of trying to ensure or prove your point that actually there is not a single honest person left in the world because of the corruption of said company or because of the well-known crimes and fraud and falsification of evidences, falsification yeah. of data, things that, listen, come to me for that information. I know that. I've yeah. released drugs. I know who, which countries to go to to have clinical trials in, which ones will turn one way, turn the other. It's well known why the WHO looks down their nose in a, to use a phrase, uh -huh. at certain countries' 
uh, certification of meditation and doesn't look that way at other countries, certain uh, regulation and whatever. Because uh -huh. the game is the game. Everybody knows what's going on. The idea that there is some mass conspiracy where every single criminal entity uh, pharma company that has committed a crime at some time or whatever represents all of the people who are involved in that is not just an embarrassing claim from a secular news, you know, just a reality point of view, but Islamically, it is utterly untenable. It's completely unacceptable for Muslims to act and speak in this way. Otherwise, there's no point living life yeah. because you might as well now suspect everything that moves. Because yeah. if you start to believe that everyone and every person who has been put forward in a position of responsibility is all part of some cabal, because that's old, and that's what people have got to accept. If your guests and your people are making that initial step and then going on, that's where it ends. And this is not our deen. So I don't mind non-Muslims coming out with this kind of nonsense. But I will refuse to allow Muslims to claim that and then to go on and practice as practicing Muslims and make out that this is actually an Islamically tenable position. It's just completely yeah. unacceptable. But th this is, I don't know if you're familiar with the work of uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Have you, he has the Children's Health Defense. In which, in, in which, in which area? Uh, I know of him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. He he was uh, he was uh, you know he's the nephew of the um, former president of the United States and yeah. he's uh, also a um, a environmental activist. His story is that um, people started coming up to me at that time, mainly women with children who had intellectual disabilities who were vaccine injured, and they'd come up to me and say. If you're really concerned about mercury exposures to children, you need to look at vaccines. And I didn't want to do it. Um, you know, my family has been involved in the issues of intellectual disabilities for generations. Yeah. It's something I grew up with, I care deeply about, but I wanted to spend my time protecting water. One of these women came to me on Cape Cod in the, at the end of 2004. She had a big pile of scientific studies, and she put them on my front stoop. And she was a psychologist from Minnesota. Her name was Dr. Sour Bridges. Her son had been um, a perfectly healthy boy, got an autism from a vaccine. The vaccine court had acknowledged that that was true and given him a $20 million settlement. And um, she put this pile on my front step and she said, I'm not leaving here till you read those. Hmm. And I'm very accustomed to reading science. It's part of my job. Right. Uh, I brought hundreds of lawsuits, they all involve scientific controversy. I started reading that science and I was immediately struck by the huge delta between what the actual science was saying and what the public health so, agents were. And this is the last thing he wanted to get involved in, the last thing, you know, he was suing companies like uh, Monsanto and whatnot. So he saw the corruption from within. He gives a story of how, you know, the EPA, who's a government uh, regulatory agency, is supposed to be monitoring people like, you know, Monsanto and whatnot. But, and, but then they were going over this, uh, they were suing them because of, I think, this gly glyphosate. You know, it's a carcinogen causing cancer and whatnot. Now the EPA is saying their experts are coming on and saying, no, it doesn't cause cancer. Uh, Robert F. Kennedy wins the case. And then they find out that the EPA, they actually, they, the head of the EPA was, EPA was working. It was working with Monsanto, right? So the agency was actually captured. You, had, you said we have to rely on the majority. Well, I grew up in the state of Virginia, Alan. When I grew up, it was illegal because the majority voted. And it was illegal for a black man to marry a white woman. I it, was it was illegal it was for blacks to vote. So the majority is not, no, in a democracy, you have the courts there that protect our I rights. Agree. I agree. Against I agree. The majority. Um, and unfortunately, we are in a situation today where we have tremendous corruption, not only in Congress, which is receiving, which receives more money from pharmaceutical companies than any other industry. Pharmaceutical gives in lobbying twice the amount that oil and gas, which is the next big one, four times with defense and aerospace. There are more lobbyists, pharma lobbyists in Congress than there are members of Congress in the Senate. So anyway, we have lost the um, you know, the legislative independent of that body. And the, unfortunately, Alan, the, the agencies are also captured. Now, you know about agency capture. It happens everywhere. 
And I yep. sued EPA my entire life. We just um, sued the, the uh, EPA. We just sued Monsanto. We got an historic judgment, a $12 billion settlement in the Monsanto case. And I was part of that trial team. And one of the things that happened during that trial is that EPA took a position against us. They took a position that, that uh, glyphosate does not cause, Roundup does not cause cancer. As it turns out, we got an internal memorandum that showed that the head of the pesticide division in EPA was actually working secretly for Monsanto and killing studies and twisting studies and ghostwriting studies to falsify the science. So now he he starts to he went through he went through this literature that she had and he would just you know he was uh, shocked you know what I mean and and this w woke up the truth you know woke up his conscience so then he started to go down that rabbit hole as you call it he started looking at you know uh, this even even deeper and then he started to see you know for instance the FDA fifty percent of his budget comes from vaccine companies CDC eleven point five billion of a budget you know they have four point nine billion is in buying and selling vaccines. Imagine this, that's EPA, which is an independent agency. Imagine this, FDA, that's 50% of its budget from vaccine companies, from the industry, 50%. The CDC has an $11.5 billion budget and 4.9 billion of that is buying and selling and distributing vaccines. CDC is a vaccine company. It owns 57 vaccine patents, so it can make money on every sale of a vaccine. NIH owns hundreds of vaccine patents. NIH owns half the patent for the Moderna vaccine. So he started to see, you know, the great conflicts of interest. He would see, you know, people who are working for the vaccine, for the, uh, for the pharmaceutical company or the uh, uh, CDC. Next thing you know, they come out and they start working. They have a nice position at, at the uh at the at, at pharma you know what i mean so he started to see all these contradict the conflicts of interest and he calls it out so i, I bring him up because uh this is he he starts to point out and, sh and show you know when a person sees how they call it the sausage is being made they see all the corruption behind so now obviously you know and there's another great example given i don't know if you've seen this uh, documentary called vaxxed have you seen the documentary vaxxed uh, yeah you've seen it Yes. I, you, listen, this is let me just finish area. this. Let me just finish. Yeah, I'm, I'm really I'm happy that you watch something like this, because I really think, you know, this is something that everyone should see. I think the movie is something to, that people should see. There was a backlash, which I haven't fully explored and I will. But definitely there's something to that movie. And there's another movie called Trace Amounts. And these there are, there's a lot of information about things that are happening with the CDC, the pharmaceutical companies, there's a lot of things that are not said. I, as a parent of a child who has autism, am concerned, and I want to know the truth, and I'm not anti-vaccine. I want safe vaccines. When you get, a, some people can't get a, 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 a certain type of shot, and they, they can die from it, you know, even penicillin. So why should that not be with vaccine, which it isn't? That one is, is revolves around a scientist, the senior scientist, Dr. William Thomas, you know? They are not doing their job as regulators. And in fact, the senior scientists at CDC today, the senior vaccine safety scientist, who's been, in fact, he's still in fact at CDC, he was the senior scientist there for 18 years. He is the author or co-author on all of the major studies that CDC has produced on vaccine safety, and particularly the studies that show the vaccine does not cause autism. His name is Dr. William Thompson. Three years ago, he came forward and he said, uh, we have been ordered to fake all the science of the last decade on autism. And, and, he, and he said, in fact, we were in the, the major study, which is called the Stefano 2004, it's the most cited study on this subject and he, on PubMed. And he said, in that study, we found out that black boys who get the MMR vaccine had a 363% greater risk of getting an autism diagnosis than black boys who waited after 36 months. He said he was ordered to come into a conference room with all that data, with his four other co-authors by their CDC boss, Frank DiStefano, 
who then ordered them to destroy that data in front of them in CDC headquarters and then published that study saying there is no effect. And senior scientists from the CDC. So he's on record as coming out, you know, and then there was another scientist that hooked up with him. I think it was Dr. Hooker. And the, and the whole documentary mainly revolves around that, where you had this chief scientist who was the one who conducted the major uh, peer-reviewed studies coming out and saying that, you know, they, they manipulated the data, you know, they lied. And there was uh, actually a 360% greater risk of autism in African-Americans, right? So where do we go from there? And then you had his bo boss, they t he talks about Frank uh, Destafo, his boss in the CDC, coming calling him and the other uh, co-authors of the study. I think the main study is uh, that people quote is 7214. You know this study? No. I don't. So this is one of the main studies that is, is quoted uh, saying that there's no link between uh, 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 autism and, and the vaccine. So just to make it short now. So now we see this, this complete fraud happening right before our eyes. Where does the confidence go? Confidence go. I mean, doesn't our dean teach us like you know? Uh, to, no, to, no, it doesn't. So how, how do and we? What, how, you, I'll tell you how it doesn't. Okay. But you get the point that what he's bringing up. Absolutely, you know, of course. Yeah. Like I said, I've seen facts. I've seen arguments. I know a number of these uh, 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 scientists. I've had conversations with some of them. Yeah. Obviously, different. So ones, does that deserve things. skepticism? Does the, that deserve the, the, uh, the a person? Yeah. You see, let, me, let, let me tell you about the concept of skepticism. Yeah. All right. Skepticism is an aspect and a tool of the Muslim. Yeah. It's not the Muslim. Skepticism is an aspect that we use in Islam to develop narratives, to develop truth, tr uh, 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 to develop an evidence tra uh, uh, trail, to ensure that our methodology reaches an objective, which is that which is requested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. The problem that we have today in society is that people turn skepticism into the entire cake. And when Muslims think that, you know, I can be a Muslim skeptic or Islamic skepticism, where the skepticism itself becomes the religion itself, where everything is to be criticized, every single thing is to be considered to be suspicious. They're going to they're in for a big shock. Our religion, you have to be balanced. Our religion does not operate on these principles. Yeah. You will always find, again, I, as I said to you, I want to bring this back down to Islamic principles. When it comes to our Islamic sciences in any of the areas, we'll just take, for example, Hadith. For example, you will always find eminent authorities that will go against the wider narrative. Eminent. We're not talking Kennedys and Ten Pennies with my greater respect to them who are very, very minor in the wider scheme of things. Yeah. I'm talking Imam Dar Qutnis, for example. That would be in modern times, if we were, let me to give, to give you an example, if we were looking at the area of vaccines, it would be America pulling out. It would be the world saying they're all good and America saying they're not good. That that level, not even going to an individual level, it will be a huge upset to the system. There would be huge controversy. That still does not, as we know very well as Muslims, deny the consensus of the alternative opinion, even if as someone as mighty and powerful and financially stable as America were to have a different opinion. For example, on Israel. For example, on Israel. America is the only country that consistently vetoes every single uh, resolution against Israel. Does that deny the, the consensus of the international community, Eddie? No. Does it? No, no. Uh, despite the size of America, the importance of America, the power of America, the vested interest and not interest of America. L okay. Meaning that, meaning so, that. I, let me, it does so not I don't lose you. So I don't lose you. 10,000, 1,000, these figures in methodology yeah. do not compare to tens of millions hundreds of millions it is important for us to understand that there is no way that we can account or explain and neither should we want to try to refute or assassinate or rubbish if you were looking at if i was a pro-vaxxer right it would be absurdity and and it would be my downfall if i was to try to go after dr tenpenny go after dr radford go after that study that uh, go after the filmmakers of vax that have got many problems x y z try to uh somehow repulsively try to uh, uh, denigrate the claim of a mother that her child died because of x y z mm -hmm. neither is that acceptable neither is it islamically required there will always be voices and 
that are against and that will claim evidences. Our arguments must be based upon the evidences, not on the personalities, okay. not upon so, the realities, uh, okay. but upon the numbers, l l upon the consensus. Okay. There is absolute consensus. consensus okay, here. But there is, Robert, a, a huge body of science that doesn't support your position. Show it to me. Okay. Well, show it to me. I, I can, but okay. I'm not going to do that right here. Show me one study. I'll show you if a lot you of studies, show but me right a now, study I don't, I, listen, I just want to know. Vaccinated children want, are healthier than unvaccinated right. children. Then I will put that study right. on my website okay. and I will quit my job. Okay. When it comes to the, uh, the authentication or the regulation of medicines, it is the international community as a whole and the scientists as a whole that are looked at, not the corrupt practices of XYZ that are found to be guilty in a court case or found to have been uh, playing with the figures That's or right. trying to avoid um, a scandal, cover up, whatever. We know very well that every field has that, whether it's the cigarette field, whether it's tobacco, whether it's uh, oil, whether it's water quality, whether it's vaccines. Pfizer, for example, has got lots of game in this. Yeah. Our, 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 our uh, approach to it as Muslims has to be based upon methodology and not individual circumstances, not individual actors. When it comes to the actual uh, 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 sharp end, we're looking at the figures on the ground, the people who are sick, the people who are ill, the people who are recovered, the people who are fixed, the people who are in hospital, the people out of hospital. These are, this is the hard data. There's no doubt we can criticize how we got to the process where we start to apply a, 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 a solution or a vaccine protocol or a strategy. Absolutely no doubt, and I've spoken about that at length, and I've condemned the, the, the problems that, that they've been part of. But we look at the reality on the ground, and the reality on the ground does not support even better, even the only 1% of the claims that are being made by the people against the authorities, against the science, against the field, against the individuals involved, against yeah. all the healthcare workers, against the reality in our hospitals, against the families that have lost all their people. It just doesn't. And to deny this is very problematic Islamically, because once you start to deny this concept of tawatur, of unanimity in opinion, of the lack of possibility of feasible lies, the lack of possibility of everyone colluding together to create some great conspiracy, once you start to go against human reality against like that, that's when your dean starts to suffer. I don't mind people suffering in their secular understanding yeah. of vaccine. I couldn't care less. But if you carry on with this nonsense, yes. your dean will suffer. Uh, so let me, if I'm understanding correctly, so I'm not misquoting you. So the, the thing now that w I, when I ask this question in our heart to heart and me just playing the skeptic and trying to understand things and relaying what one side to get to the bottom of things. So now what we're saying when I ask the question I, is that there's a consensus, if I'm understanding, of scholarship academics here so that trumps what anyone else is going to say. Without a shadow of a doubt. Is that what you're saying? Without a shadow of a doubt. Show it to me. Okay. Well, show it to me. I, I can, but okay. I'm not going to do that right here. Show me one study. I'll show you a if lot you of studies show me right a now. Study. I don't, I, listen, I just want to know. Vaccinated children want, are healthier than unvaccinated right. children. Then I will put that study right. on my website okay. and I will quit my job. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't understand. Sahil Bukhari. Yeah. Uh, is it a sahih book? Is it an authentic book? Uh -huh. Yes. Thoroughly. Here's the key. Did their leadership as a imma, did their leadership deny the consensus and the absolute fact that it is the most authentic book and it only has authentic hadith? No, it didn't. And that is an insight into Islamic methodology. Islamic methodology, when it comes to sources, when it comes to evidence, is not what you may think. That every person who has a point to say is not given airtime. Every statement that is made by an authority is not considered. It is the evidence which is considered. Ghalib al dhani and the the high realm of, pop, of probability is what our religion is based yeah. upon. Uh, we do not have to have 100% of all people in history agreeing on a point to be correct. Mm -hmm. We don't even need to be anywhere near 100%, not even close to. And that's the difference, as I said between people who are growing up in a, you know, online, everybody got a mouthpiece, everybody can say what they want, and, you know, creating this kind of system where when they have a problem with something, they start to deny the area, deny the field. And I want you to, I want your viewers to understand this, that yeah. we've had this parallel in our history. The groups in our deen, like the Mu'tazila, the Jahmiya, the Qur'aniyun, those who reject the Sunnah in its entirety, that was their response when they come across a anti-vax report or a criminal 
expose of Pfizer, for example, or whatever. Deny the whole film. Right off the entire sign. So you can't Say throw the baby. You, you're saying you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. It, it is. This yeah. is not an Islamic principle. Oh no, no. Yes. Yeah. Not there. Okay. So this is what I'm going to go convey back. So I'm going to. You're giving me something. Okay, to work with. But now, if someone comes back again, playing the skeptic, and we see at one time there was a consensus that, for instance, you know, uh, because certain things develop, science develops, and whatnot. Very so good. this is a good point. So, yeah. so if if we see certain things, because the other side will argue that, look. Um, you will see uh, when they went in front of Congress, you had a certain amount of vaccines that were given uh, before, let's say, the 1980s, right? There was a handful, and you saw... People say there's this huge body of science. Uh, what the science consists of is a handful, a tiny handful of epidemiological studies that were written by industry and by the CDC, which is part of the industry, and none of those studies do, all of them are fatally flawed, and I can go through each one with you. And none of those studies do what you would want a study that you wanted to exculpate vaccines to actually do, which is to compare a vaccinated population to an unvaccinated population and then look at health outcomes. That there was a limited amount of chronic diseases, right? Then you know this, obviously, that then they went in front of Congress. So the Supreme Court actually issued the statement that vaccines are unavoidably safe. I believe one in 300 from the DPT vaccine were suffering brain damage. And then they were getting sued so much. And then from there, they were classified. The Supreme Court said vaccines are unavoidably unsafe and there shall be no more lawsuits against any vaccine company. So legally, they're classified as unavoidably unsafe. That's their legal classification. And when I say that in court in these state you know, uh, cases that I have, which are not injury, obviously, that's, that, uh, that's federal court. Okay. Um, the judges always stop me and go, what? What did you say? Wait, repeat that, yeah. repeat that. And I'm like, they're legally classified as unavoidably unsafe, Your Honor. And then they're like, whoa, wait a minute. They got the shield of liability. But they said, wait a minute, we can't sue them. I mean, even though that I have met that are pro-vaccine, when you let them know that the vaccine makers cannot be sued, even they say, wait a minute, I'm against what you're here for, but I ain't for that. You telling me that I can't sue the vaccine makers if it's proven that vaccine injured my child? I said, no, they're indemnified. You can't touch them. And then you have the VAERS Vaccine Compensation Fund. To this day, it's like $4.5, $4.6 billion has been paid out. The vaccine courts have paid out $4 billion. And the threshold for getting back into a vaccine court and getting a judgment, HHS admits that fewer than 1% of people who are injured ever even get to court. And then, so this is the other side arguing that, look, if you're saying they're safe and effective, safe and effective, doctors in medical school, they don't learn about- Because they're already being taught vaccines are safe and effective, and they're the best thing you can do to further the health of the population. They're already being taught this. And I was never taught when I was in medical school 30 years ago, what was in a vaccine. We were only taught that they're wonderful and do them. So, uh, no, most doctors trained today have no idea what's in the vaccines. This is, we need to get back to doing that if we're doing something to a healthy person. You know, you got a healthy child in front of you and you're saying, well, we're gonna do this thing to you, this vaccine, and it's a good idea. And all they're being told is it's safe and effective, do it. And oh, by the way, if you don't do it, you're gonna have to leave my practice. That's what's happening today. It's, that should be illegal. I mean, if, if you have a doctor that's telling you to leave your practice if you don't do what I say, that's called paternalism, and we were taught in medical school that is the worst way to practice medicine. And yet the Academy of Pediatrics is now saying that's okay. Today, pediatricians are being trained on how to, um, I would just use the word coerce, their patients into doing all the vaccines. See, this is an aside, by the way. What you're talking about is fact. So don't, fact. yeah, and you think that this is a side. This is not a side. Anyone who's got half a brain should know this is absolute fact what you're talking about. Okay. I, let me summarize. I'm not making point. this stuff up now. Including giving eight to 10 vaccines on one day. So that is something the Institute of Medicine has acknowledged. The federal government disagrees, but I think everybody needs to understand that child vaccine schedule has not been adequately studied for safety. Fewer than 40 studies have actually studied the schedule.
that's not enough studies to prove that that schedule is safe or effective. Plus, plus there hasn't been any, um, there haven't been any studies at looking at the synergistic effects of the ingredients. So if you have one metal, what does it do to the body? If you have one metal and another metal, what does that do to the body? If you have one metal, one metal, and antibiotics, what does that do to the body? And it's already been shown that metal detoxification in the presence of antibiotics is diminished versus metal detoxification without antibiotics. The studies in this book, Miller's Review of Critical Vaccine Studies, this, this book, there's 400 studies in here. And these are studies, most of these studies are recent studies. These are all studies that are showing problems with vaccines because I got tired of hearing medical doctors saying there are no studies that show that vaccines are a problem, that vaccines are unsafe. What are you talking about? That is an outright lie. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of studies published in peer-reviewed journals documenting safety and efficacy problems associated with vaccines. Correct. Okay. The, 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 uh, the early vaccines had major problems. They had side effects. They were using certain... Like you gave the example in the beginning of, you know, to, uh, wanting to take mercury out of fish doesn't mean that you're against fish. Actually, it was those original people who kind of like stood up. And I made this point in a lecture before. If they hadn't, right, today mercury... Possibly. Allah knows best, of course. But today, you would have found in the COVID vaccine, for example, mercury. Right. It's very, very or ethyl mercury in, in one of its forms uh, or a few years ago. There has to be people that question and, and and argue and so on and so forth. So facts are facts. As for the vaccine uh, uh, um, uh, uh, payout, injury payment uh, scheme in 1988, it is very important that we understand that you can make that fact reality. And we have one in the UK as well, um, which is also paid out huge millions. OK, you can make that either work for you or work against you just like numbers so you either going to if you believe in the concept of medicines and you understand the urgency and this is from a pro healthcare point of view if you uh, believe in the the efficacy of vaccines or medicine in principle safe and tested ones i'm not talking about anything con controversial and you believe that the nature and the reality of the litigation culture that we live in I mean, U.S. obviously leads that, right? And it's now made a major impact on the rest of the world, where people are very, very afraid and scared to do certain things because of fear of litigation. And you see that that actually has a marked impact upon performance, safety, and so on. I'll give you an example of safety, right? Just to break it down to, to, the, to the viewer. As a pharmacist or as a doctor, if I make a prescribing mistake, so I see it saying, I'm a tryptoline and I give out amlodipine, right? So it's a drug which is meant to send you to sleep or to give you for anxiety. And instead I give a drug for blood, high blood pressure. That's a pretty, I don't want to say, I don't want to say safe, but I mean, you're not going to, most cases you're not going to die, but it's a serious error, right? Same strength, same whatever, whatnot. And I now give that to you. Most of the time, someone in the family spots it, has a look at this and says, you know, this is not what I was told by the doctor. And they read it or they don't spot it. They have the complete trust in the pharmacist and they take it and they start feeling really bad. They take the box into the doctor. Doctor says, I never wrote you that, blah, 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 blah. So this happens in all fields, in all areas. And what do the regulatory bodies do? How do you think that they, they deal with that? They uh, 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 introduce systems that are error reporting. Error reporting systems are meant to be that let's try to identify a pattern of how these mistakes actually occur, yes. right? And see if we can find tiredness or if we can find where there's a mental blackout if you're standing in a certain position and whether you should take a mental break each time that you check a prescription, etc. The only mm -hmm. way that you can make those rulings mm -hmm. or those decisions is to get data. The only way that you can get data is how? For people to be what? Honest enough to go and say, I made a mistake. Now, no one likes to say I made a mistake. And sometimes if you make a big mistake, you are going to be, you know, it's a difficult place to be. And so what was happening? It was a complete failure. It was a complete failure because nobody was willing to report. We have to understand that, you know, these ideas that people come up with in their conspiracy theories, and it genuinely is, they don't work in real life. The idea that you can somehow just assume that the world is going to be okay because people are going to be honest and just fair with one another, that they're not going to 
go for litigation, that they're not going to, you know, hang someone out to dry if they make a mistake. Mm -hmm. They're not going to, they're not going to look to whether a person is sincere or not sincere. The person did it on purpose or not, whether there was corruption or not, but we're just going to hang them out to dry. Or I can make a living out of this, or I can make money, I can pay my house off with this. Mm -hmm. There are people out there that do that. That's the real world. And if you take this view, then you see that the injury payment scheme that allows genuine, and obviously what we hope, genuine attempts to try to create medicine that's trying to help, that not trying to cause problems, and that there is a risk, and all of them will say there's a risk. And if there is a risk, at least we can minimize the, the impact upon the rest of the good that's being done, right? By mitigating that risk and taking it off their hands. Governments jumped at that chance because they saw greater benefits than a cost and risk, even yeah. 4.5 billion, which is peanuts to how much it would cost them if a pandemic went out of control, for example, just using 4.5 billion as a, a year cost today. If, if, the, if the American government had the chance to pay 4.5 trillion, forget about 4.5 billion, to avoid the impact of one year, Donald Trump would have paid 405 trillion to have paid, you know, uh, to avoid COVID and him losing his, his spot let alone the impact upon the rest of people and their lives. Obviously, he couldn't care less about that, but any country. So everything is based upon benefit, benefit and risk. And if you look at that as somehow the, 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 the government is actually a wider extension of the pharmaceutical company, and they're doing that to, for the fraudulent interests of the, of the of pharmaceutical company, which I can accept is a theory, right? Then that, that's, that's the reason they're doing it, so they can make sure they make their profits. Well, once you've gone down that line, Eddie, the game's over. Would you smile as well go and find yourself behind your coffin and jump in and die? Because once you've now said that the government is now the pharmaceutical companies and the pharmaceutical companies is the government and they're all just trying to rag you for money and they're trying to make you die and make sure that you don't have to, you can't claim enough money and that everybody's now protected, that there's one massive conspiracy theory to life and existence in, in its fundamental sense. Once that conclusion has been reached, then what's the point of life then? There's no hope for us. What the argument that's being made is, and, and if I understand your second second uh, point here is is that, um, and let me just uh, kind of, I have a, a I don't want to, I want to limit this to, uh, we're almost out of time, and I, but I have a, I want to get your action uh, answer to some of these questions that we also have that are uh, here. Uh, if you can like uh, give me some of a semi, you know, condensed version of it or directors. Sure, sure, sure. Directors, yeah. answers, no problem, uh, yeah. So, so back to the back, back point the, uh, before we went on. So if you have, for instance, these inserts, right, which uh, it's doctors don't learn about vaccines in medical school, right? They yeah. don't learn, they learn about the schedule. They learn about, they don't learn about the ingredients. They don't learn about these sure. things. So but they learn something far more valuable. They learn the principle of how to deal with evidence. They understand the concept of peer reviewed journals, of understanding authorities, of understanding the key points of data points yeah. that matter. Nobody so, is expected to learn, let alone, and I'm no favorite, I'm no massive friend yeah. of the doctors, right? Okay, but just, you know, being a failed doctor myself, I'm their sworn enemy, okay? Yeah. So as a pharmacist, we hate doctors. But let's just make it clear. Doctors are not expected, not as pharmacists, as any professional in any field, to know absolutely everything about everything when they're yeah. studying. They're meant to learn principles that equip them to deal with every single new release, new medicine on its own merits, with its own details. So for, for people to claim that because you're a professor in, immun in immunology or you are an mm -hmm. epidemiologist, for example, that the doctors themselves will not be able to understand this is patently untrue. Yeah. Patently false. Yeah. So the point what they make is that uh, they themselves, these doctors who are also, you know, giving out the, sh the shots, they didn't learn anything. But then when they learned about, you know, the mercury. Is that... Most doctors in America haven't actually taken the time to do the fundamental research that they need to do to figure out what the true risks and benefits are of any given vaccine. So in this country, we don't really have informed consent when it comes to vaccines. And I think we've lost our way in looking at vaccines and looking at what are the iatrogenic effects. In other words, what harm is being done by our vaccine program? So, you know, I wrote this book, The Vaccine Friendly Plan. Because just to be to, so people know, you're not anti-vaccine. Absolutely not. So the dilemma I was in in 2008, after I had those four cases of uh, children who regressed into severe autism, and I'd already learned about toxicity. I'd, I'd read studies on thimerosal, on aluminum toxicity. I mean, there's books on this topic. It just, I could no longer ethically keep doing vaccines business as usual with the CDC schedule. 
And the things that concerned me the most were that hepatitis B dose for newborns. Back then they weren't pushing vaccines on pregnant women, that's happened since. And the sheer number of vaccines that were being given, for example, at the two month visit, we were giving six different vaccines, three of which had too much aluminum. So you're multiplying huge toxins, adding on top, adding on top. And it was just clearly uh, not a scientifically justifiable approach when you understand toxicity. The aluminum, formaldehyde, all these toxic chemicals, then they learned about, you know, that there is no true double-blind placebo, the gold standard for vaccines. Um, the Institute of Medicine, mm -hmm. which is the National Academy of Science, which is the ultimate arbiter of vaccine safety science, has repeatedly said to the CDC, you are claiming that you have studied this issue, particularly the issue between autism and vaccines. You have not. Oh, it's not Robert Kennedy. It's the Institute of Medicine, which is the highest authority, scientific authority in our government, right. has repeatedly said to the CDC, you have not done the studies necessary to make these claims that you are making. In 20 they learned that there is no true safety. What does that, mean? What, what does that even mean? There's no true double blind study. What does that even mean? That, there's no, that's the goal. What they say is that's the gold standard. That's it the is gold, the gold standard. But there, what for, does it mean for that safety, there is no, for, no. because of the shield of liability, there's no incentive. So, for example, let me see layman's terms. If you're trying to buy a car and you know that you cannot sue the manufacturer and then the, the manufacturer has been sued and sued over for all the deficiencies in their car, would you buy the car? So now people are scared. Now they have vaccine injury children, and now they're getting these uh, these doctors. That's, all a, that's a criticism against the company when it comes to taking a vaccine. How is that a criticism against the the, the trial? Uh, which trial? The I'm saying that the example that you gave, yeah, that would be a, a good example of how we should be critical against the company itself when it comes to their product. Yes. Okay. How is that a problem against double uh, blind uh, uh, placebo? Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, so, so the okay. contention that people have is that now because of the shield of liability, they don't have an incentive, nor do they do a double blind placebo uh, for these MMR and all these other vaccines. They, there's no double blind placebo, so that's their. Oh, I think vaccines have have uh, saved millions of lives, and I just accepted the dogma that they were safe and, and that the, that's what the science said. I started looking at the science and I started calling people within the agencies. I called Paul Offit, who was a big defender of vaccines, and I called, called uh, Kathleen Stratton at CDC and other people within the agencies, and I started questioning them. And uh, their answers they gave me the answers that they gave to the public, but I was informed about the science. And when I started drilling down with them on the science, it was clear that not only that the science they were citing me was bogus, but that they knew that it was weak and they were unwilling to defend it in front of uh, informed criticism. And that shocked me because these were not, I, I was used to environmental agencies becoming captured, but a public health agency that is charged with protecting the health of our children, to lie about science um, and to manipulate science, which is what they were doing, uh, just seemed criminal. They're trying okay, to get okay. them, they're trying to get them, they're, and they're also trying to get the Robert F. Kennedy. He also makes his point. Why don't they open up the records? What what they mean is every doctor that goes, he documents injuries that are happening uh, yes. to children, which are vaccinated, which are not. If they yes. would just open up the the records, we would we would end this debate. They they don't they're not doing that. Uh, well, who's so, not doing that? In, uh, in, in 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 the UK, there is no secret records. The yellow we have a yellow triangle. Uh, uh, every country has its own uh, adverse effect reporting yeah. system. OK, you've seen a lot of, you know, debate. You know, one of the most hilarious ones was the 3,916 vaccine related injuries that were reported in December. OK, and you've got people who have absolutely not a single clue about neither vaccines or adverse effects or injuries through the little videos going around saying that 3,916 events and you think this vaccine is safe. OK, well, first of all, you either have to accept this. This, Eddie, is what blows my mind. Yeah. All right for a Muslim to claim this. First of all, I would say to such a person, are you happy to stick with 3,916? Uh, like, uh, do you want to put this forward as a valid point? What's right? that for, 396, what is that? Yeah, it's, 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 the, it's the latest, you know, salvo in this battle that 
how can we, you know, the 23 doctors, 23 people in Norwegian, in Norway died as a result of this. Uh-huh. The the baseball player, whatever his name, Hank, blah, blah, blah whatever you want, the American guy. Oh, who died, he died yeah. after taking the vaccine. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. So this is all part of a crescendo that, hold on, how is this even safe? How is it even safe when we have these people dying? Yeah. So you can admit that these are ones and twos and tens and twenties. Yeah. But yeah. I'll say, no, don't worry. Take your 3,916. Okay. Right. And I'll give you that, which is very different to one or two people. 3,916, if I gave you that, 4,000 people, let's just say, I have had these effects. When people push it forward, they, they think that the rest of the world is stupid. That as if 4,000 people have died as a result of taking the vaccine. That the concept of adverse effect, which is sometimes an upset stomach, by the way. Sometimes a fever which has gone on for longer than two days or three days. That gets noted down as an adverse effect. There are tears for what happens now that's just one fact what and about what what to, about what about the epileptic so, 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 so let, me, yeah. let me let me just even make your point that you're gotcha. about to you're about to put ahead let's i will give you even that 3916 people died i'll even say that for you Eddie, mm-hmm. okay which didn't not even 300 people died not even 30 people died let alone 3000 but i'll say say 4000 people died islamically Forget about now every other system because this is the Dean show, right, brother? 4,000 people died. Let's have a look at how many vaccinations have been given. There's been about four or five million in the UK. There's been about X million in the States. I don't know. I've got no idea. Maybe 50 million in the world have done or 10 million or 20 million. If you start looking at the numbers of people who are dead as a result of that, I'm just taking a very fatalistic because it's all false. 4,000 didn't die. But I'm just saying, let's assume that it did. Would we reject the solution, the savior, the, that's a, a horrible word, let me put that out, out. Let's just say a medical uh, aid in trying to combat a, a, a pandemic. And we would base its acceptability or not acceptability on 4,000. Let's do it. Let's, let's do the figure. So right? could, uh, people, uh, give, me your que- give me your question. So when I go back to someone like Sherry Tenpenny. Oh, they will know this question. They know it very well okay. because they love figures. No point, no, not one. Okay as a fatality risk, all right? That means one in, I don't know how many billion, whatever that risk is of a person dying. I don't know, whatever, whatever it is. I, 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 one in a million, one in a one in yeah. hundred, I don't know. I can tell you that every act of your daily life is more risky of you losing your life. So, what's, going, so, so the going question out, you would, you going would pose... Out, going outside and walking to your car, you have a one in 114 chance of falling and dying. Okay. One in 114. And people are going to say, that the fact that there's a risk out there that that three four three thousand four nine hundred three four thousand people have died, which they haven't, but let's just assume that means that the vaccine is off the table. It's a conspiracy. It's proof that the whole system is broken. It's nonsense. Yeah, listen, yeah. it's nonsense. Islamically, yeah. this is not sustainable. Yeah, we're not. It's an that's embarrassment dark, from an evidence. Yeah, point going of down a dark hole of of uh, going down. A, uh, we can't. You know, I guess. Uh, you know, just like. Um, uh, there are things that go on, you know, you have conflicts of interest we talked about. That's the, I think that's the main thing. It's not like, you know, okay, there's like people sitting down around, the, uh, just like I don't think we can be naive to the fact that you, you don't have, you know, uh, the, the pharmaceutical industry is not really about eliminating disease. They're about managing symptoms and making profits and money, right? Make so 100%. They're, they're, they're 100%. not about, they're, listen, listen, they're, they're listen. not, they're I'm, not I'm, about I'm sitting, I'm gonna sitting gonna around. This. These, these, these people, let me just finish. These are not yeah. people who have taqwa, you know, God 100%. consciousness, and, and they're thinking about 100%. how how are we going to cha- save the world. You've seen from- my first lecture, right? You've seen my first yeah. lecture on this. Yeah. You saw how skewered the industry, yes? Yes. Okay. I only did one bit of preparation for this interview. I spent five minutes doing some calculations. Yeah. Okay. Five minutes. That's the only thing I've done. And I want to just show it to you. The reason why, you know, that, and I want to say this to calm the hearts of the people who are getting angry at what I'm saying, because they are anti, again, they are not. You know, they think that the, the COVID has been exaggerated. They think that, they, you know, their civil liberties are trashed. They don't want to wear masks. They don't want all of this nonsense. But, 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 but would you say would you would you say that people are politicians, others? I mean, there's some, you know, uh, uh, there, there's some validity to like, for instance, the, the look, look at when I don't know what your view now is of 9-11, for instance, you know, people capitalize on this. Do you still think, look. Uh, I, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, even though I think this term, you have labels that are thrown out there to kind of yeah. just make people look dumb, stupid, you know, and and, and and to prevent, you know, good, healthy talks like we're having. You follow me? Yeah. So but when yeah. you look at when you look at a building, 
number seven, go down and no plane hit it, nothing. What are you supposed to say? You know, I'm not getting sure. into everything else. So, but then I, after, I, I, I get it. Listen, but, listen, but let me just finish this. But then you have people, seven, then you I, have, I, I, I don't understand it. But then, but then, yeah. Right. But then you have people pay, passing bills like the Patriot Act. You follow me? People, you know, they take are the us, ones who benefit so we, most. Listen. So listen, you do have, I, you we, do. We can, absolutely. I get so you do have people who are capitalizing off this for political. Okay. Yes. That's what I'm saying. We can't be naive to that. Look at the people. Hundred percent, but that does that deny that, the presence? No, the problem. No, and, no, and that's the problem, right? That's the, the the issue that we have here. That a valid argument is turned into the entire pie, and that is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. What, how it happened? Whether the Chinese made it, or whether I made it, or whether it was sent by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala as a pure punishment, it is actually irrelevant when it comes to the treating of it. It's they plan, Allah in, plans, in our, Allah, God Almighty is the best of planners. Response. That's, yes. As, as Muslims, it's relevant in our spiritual response. Uh -huh. Because if we spend all of our time thinking who manufactured it, it was bioweapons, bio but we spend our entire no, time. No, we're wasting, which, we're going to a wasting dark. Wasting time. Neither you can let, change it. Let me, get, let me get some facts. Let me get, let's stay, let me stay. From a punishment yeah. from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what Let me stay done, academic. It makes, it makes us yeah, reflect let me get, and change our ways, right? Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is that there's a spiritual response, and that's important. And then there's a practical one. Whoever's profiting about it, and we we know millions of people making trillions out of it. Whoever is abusing the system, whoever, whatever, it does not change to, that my yeah. uncle passed away on Monday. Mm -hmm. It didn't change that uh, so and so passed away of it. That your uncle, your passed uncle passed it. away. He did. May Allah, uh, grant, Allah. May Allah grant him jannah. And make but I give that example because it doesn't change. It doesn't make me more emotional to it. It doesn't make me more pro. It doesn't make me more thingy. And why? Because we go on the evidence. Before my uncle was even ill, there were uncles passing away. Before these uncles were passing away and there were not even people who were getting ill in our community, our own brothers, myself included, and many people around me were in intensive care units, were in hospitals that were struggling to deal with this unknown disease that was decapac decapacitating the healthcare system and so on and so forth. Now, now, listen, this is a very important point. Does that make the pandemic the international catastrophe that it's made out to be? No, it doesn't. But what do we read it as? We do see it as this catastrophe because it affects us more in the West. When you have a system, because you asked earlier on that there was a time earlier on where vaccines were seen as, you know, a basic, simple kind of idea. And then suddenly it exploded. And it, you know, unavoidable injury. You gave the example, right? Oh, sorry. What did you say? Unavoidable. The, the um, uh, Supreme Court. Safety. It, the Supreme Court issued that the vaccines are un they're unavoidably unsafe. And they said to Congress, we cannot make this, we cannot make vaccines safely. They are unavoidably unsafe. That is the phrase in the statute, un unavoidably unsafe. Uh, unsafe, yeah. They're so, unavoidably... So I want you to imagine that, as you said, that there was a point uh, which you can bring to a case a Supreme Court in a year where the attitude towards vaccines like flipped it was like you know caution and suddenly it's now part of life right and it and this is a reality that we've created yeah right that us in the west when you become dependent on upon a certain level of life when you expect for every cough and cold or for every pain that you're going to be looked after a by a healthcare professional when you expect that an illness is just routine. When you expect to survive a heart attack, the vast majority of people that have heart attacks survive. The vast people who have strokes survive. A thousand years ago, a hundred years ago, 500 years ago, the vast majority of people died. They died. We live in a different world. We've created that system, especially in the Western developed world. In America, 25.8 intensive care beds for every 100,000. This is the figures I wanted to show you, yeah? Yeah. 25.8. So let's take 26 beds for every 100,000 population. Intensive care. In Pakistan, right, which is my own country, and Nigeria, Bangladesh, the big kind of countries, Bangladesh, and Indonesia, the Muslim heavyweights, right? Okay? All of it is less than one. Less than one. The numbers are infinitesimally small if you're just talking about hospital beds, when it comes to intensive care, something else. That just goes to show you, when you grow up in a village in Pakistan, it doesn't matter if the whole world is going through a pandemic or there's a disease out there that's causing you not to be able to breathe and you need proning and you need ventilators and a CPAP and all the rest of it. 
because you're going to be left at home with no chance of going to hospital anyway. And you're either going to have to deal with it or just die. And the rest of the village is going to just deal with it. And they're going to pray over you and they're going to bury you. That's it. Yeah. But when you live in, live in the West where you've got 25, 26 beds, where you've got every possibility of surviving what you, that which you should not survive, you create a mindset. When you have a certain level of food being available at all times, when you want pineapple and mango and watermelon in the wrong season, when you want drinks on tap, when you want life to be as it is like we live, you create your own circumstances. You create your own problems. Very well known to someone like yourself that over cleanliness and over use of antiseptics and disinfectants and bleaches have created their own resistance to uh, have created these this uh, 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 rampant disease uh, uh, allergies to spread even further and further. And you're looking at people who live in the deserts and in the forests who've got absolutely no issues, strongest immunity in the world, not touch the medicine. They don't get taken down by any of this stuff. We create our own problems. Yeah. Once the problems have been created, a disease comes along that exploits that dependency upon the healthcare system, mm -hmm. that exploits that reality, the financial system that we have. The UK, for example, financially, we don't create much. We don't export and import much. Ours is a, a services-based industry, services. We have suffered. Our GDP has collapsed because of our people not willing to go out, confidence, fear, scared, blah, 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 and their own desires and their wants and you know that I'm going to be looked after and uh, the hospital is going to take care of me our our reaction is a manufactured artificial reaction that's created and exaggerated a reality which is serious but not that serious in the world's kind of scheme of things and that is a level of exaggeration which is which is acceptable and should be taught to the people let, but let, that let, does let. not that does not support the idea that it's fake that it's co that it's a pandemic that it's a big for harm that it X, Y, and that's the problem. Yeah. People cannot be balanced and discuss the evidence let, as what it is. Let me get to a few more questions, and I know a uh, few more questions here. Since you you mentioned statistic, and again, this is one that Robert F. Kennedy brings up, and I'm playing the skeptic here since I couldn't put you guys together. 2010 HHS, a federal agency, was was con commissioned to look into the CDC claim that only one uh, one in one million is injured due to vaccines. They found that. It was actually 2.6%. That means one in 40 people were actually getting seriously injured. I was commissioned to look at vaccine injury because CDC for many years had been saying vaccine injury only occurs one in a million. But what AHRQ found with the federal agency, they looked at one HMO, which was the Harvard Pilgrim HMO, and they did a machine cluster analysis, in other words, artificial intelligence counting, a very, very accurate counting system. And they said the actual rate of vaccine injury is 2.6%. That means one in 40 people get seriously injured by vaccines. Uh, by these vaccines. So the contention is, is that they have is that we have a perfectly healthy human being and we're going to go ahead to keep, prevent someone from else getting sick. How do we balance that when you have in, a medical intervention? This is how you this, so you want a quick answer. This is how you balance it. You balance. Let it me just let me just finish. Balance. Let me just finish. Yeah. So how do we balance when uh, when we back it up? We got unavoidably be safe by uh, then we have uh, by the Supreme Court. Then you have this unsafe. 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 Yep. Then you have in the vaccine inserts, you have that uh, all these hundred. 200 plus side effects, encephalitis, uh, uh, brain swelling, uh, epileptic seizures, not just like, you know. Eddie, 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 let me make it easy for you. I'm a pharmacist, right? So you know all this. Yeah, obviously. I'm a pharmacist, right? So then most we start to. Time, most of the time, if I give medicines out to a person, but you guys don't want to hear this because, you know, it's not sexy enough for this. Discussion. Have you heard of pharmacist, uh, pharmacist uh, Ben Ford? I give out blood pressure to tablets. Well, yeah. Not every time. But I will look at the person and I'll make a decision on whether I take out the, the patient information leaflet or not. Because reading that is well-known studies, right? Yeah. It destroys a person. It literally, whatever, you have a conversation with them, you try to inform them and so on and so forth, all right? And you've got to make a call that this person is going to become actually more ill than the reason they're taking a flipping tablet for just for reading this. There's brain surgery, this brain Descri damage. Even death, death. Guy, even death, even arm, death, right? <laughs> I'm going to turn into a flipping cockerel, this, that, whatever. He's having a heart attack reading this, this, this thing. Yeah. And you got to realize that the evidence does not support that happening in real life at the percentages that we know that a pain or a fever or whatever. So listen, when I, I vaccinate, I vaccinate people. When I vaccinate a person, I will tell them what they're likely to get. And I will tell them 
that if they get this next stage level of symptoms at this stage, then you do this, 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 this. I don't tell anybody that, listen, there's a possibility that you could die. I don't. And anybody who would say that every time that you give a medicine or a pill or, you know, if I give you a melon and I say to you, right, eat carefully, there's a possibility that you could die on this. Here's a lovely red apple. But yeah. there is a one in 300 chance of you choking on this. Do you say that every time you give an apple? How? So when you're giving a medicine and the chance of dying is one in even a hundred, yes. which is not. It's like one in X million, whatever it is, okay? Whatever it is. And it could change. It could go up, could go down. Is that what you say when you give a person a medicine? Of course you don't. But there's con informed consent. Doctors, that's, the, you know, you have... You Every have... single person is aware right now they... of the realities of the vaccine. Yeah. I mean, if, if there is, if there's willing disinformation, yeah. if there is, you know, as I said before, again... In the lectures and never can any person say that these are 100 percent safe never can we say that there is absolutely free of long-term side effects absolutely possible people are that's why in our country in, in the uk a product license for pfizer it has very clearly stated we've not tested this in pregnant women have a conversation with pregnant women and make them aware of what the reality is fertility we have absolutely no data that we could you know there's they haven't got a chance that the pfizer is you know got that, that much guts even though it's protected, right? Protected against being sued. And yet they still haven't got the guts to say, uh, 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 if you want fertility, it's not a problem. Because there's things bigger than just being sued. Can you imagine, can you imagine if they were stupid enough to, based upon the limited studies, which we all know, clinical trials were only 40,000, by the way, good number, not enough though to please everybody. But if I now to turn around and say, okay then, are you Muslims happy to take the 800,000 cohort study from Israel? Then you'd be turning around and saying, oh, but they're Israelis and they're this, they're this, they're that. That's the problem. You can't please everybody all the time. Yeah. There are figures that can be manipulated, that can be looked at. You can start to see certain subgroups. At the moment, when you're seeing the problems with the figures, it's because certain subgroups amongst the, the trial participants are focused on. So out of 22,000 people that are chosen to receive the vaccine and the other receive the placebo, when you're starting to look at for example, minority ethnic groups, it's only a couple of hundred, for example, amongst that 22,000. Yeah. And if you're looking at pregnant women, it was never intentionally tested on pregnant women, but some women became pregnant during the trial. Do we now use this data to say that it's safe in pregnant women? Can you imagine how well, stupid that would be? How do we answer the question like when we're, we're after this shield of liability, the vaccine schedule went from a few to like 72 plus uh, doses and then they have... The answer is that was an incredibly successful policy by the government. That's the yeah. reason they no, brought it no, in. No, what they, I'm, wanted yeah. to in, they wanted Here, to increase vaccines. Here's they what they're saying. And I, I'm playing... Like healthcare yeah, professionals do. I, I'm playing the skeptic. So here's what they're saying is that after that, we saw chronic health issues like never before like you had I agree with that so, so I then agree what with that you, as well so then I you agree. have one in 10,000 no, once you've entered into that once you've opened that door good luck in closing it I completely yeah. agree with you Eddie. so we went as away we, we have wishes a... I could hunt my own food like you do and wishes I could be as fit as you I know what it's like to want to be able to live that healthy life away from all medicines away from all artificial stuff everything organic pay the big monies and get everything pure once you like opened what... the door to eating chicken uh, I like what and, you said there. You said that before. You said if you're somebody who's uh, drinking Coca-Cola, eating all this garbage, and now don't you ask what's in the vaccine. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? It's true, though, isn't it? But here's the thing that people uh, they're scared of because they're and and you agree that you shouldn't if you don't want to take uh, these drugs you shouldn't be forced to. Shouldn't. But here here's the here's the problem the other side is worried about and why they're uh, speaking out is because they're gonna soon they're saying they're eliminating your right right your they're not eliminating any rights. Listen, it, the idea that we choose no this is happening like in California in California fight, no in California. Look, California here Listen, in places it's you can't. happened in the UK. Uh, a cruise company went on record last week and yeah. said that no one is allowed to go onto a cruise company that's not had the vaccine. Okay? If the government decided to do that, the government decided to do that, guess what? You're not going on a cruise with that company. End of story, bro. If you don't want to take the vaccine because you are so scared about the meningitis ACWY vaccine and its impact upon you, and you're not going to go and do perform Umrah or Hajj, then good luck to you. That's your own decision. Yeah. That's something which you as a personal person will have to question, will have to answer for in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not obligatory to take medications and vaccines. What about, what about this? What about this? Finish. So we, if that's your choice, 
but there's a big difference between you saying, I don't know about any problems, I'm not sure, but all I know is that I don't want to take it. Or I am positive that this is going to cause me a problem. I'm very careful about my food. I make sure that I eat, I don't, I avoid this, I avoid yeah. that, I avoid that. Why the fish would I get involved with, you know, some manufactured vaccine? I respect you, more power to you. Don't say to other people that it's a corrupt industry, it's all over, everyone's eating haram, it's all made of fetuses, it's going to kill you. Da, da, da. That's lies, 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 lies. Mm. So there's a big difference between a person but, but, informed shit. consent, yeah. looking at the evidences, and seeing what the overall ruling is. Yes, yeah, some people might die. Yes, yeah, some people, people might come across an impure vaccine, HPV vaccine, which I gave a lecture about. I said, any Muslim that is getting involved with the HPV vaccine has a bigger problem than the HPV itself, yeah. right? You understand what HPV is, right? The, the hepatitis yeah, the, 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 what, what when, when there is that whole kind of, you know, young uh, uh, men and women are doing, you know, sexual partners. Oh, let me add, that's another, why, why are they giving, that's one of the questions here. I, I, I answer the that. U in the U.S. Here, on watch, watch, watch the Islam 21C podcast. Like I said. The U.S. vaccinates when, newborn babies when, when with HV, HP vaccines, which are originally designed for prostitutes and druggies. Why are they, why are like they said, injecting newborn babies with these types? that I just gave on that. Like yeah. I just said to you, if a person is thinking about giving his, or her daughter or family, you know, the HPV vaccine, preventative, meaning before it happens, yeah. all right, you've got a bigger problem than the HPV vaccine. What on earth is happening to a tarbiyah and our bringing up of our families if we feel that as a country, we need to so immunize you, our Muslim population okay. against HPV. So, like so I you're said, against that vaccine? Of course I am. Okay, so you're, yeah, okay. I, I, I mean, like, I thought you said you saw the lectures. <laughs> Wasting yeah. my time, man. Okay. I no, but they didn't see it. I want you to. I don't want to say it. I want you to. So you're saying okay, no it. Problem. I'll repeat okay. It. I'll repeat what part? All right. Here's the. Let me just get. To, watching, all right. Here the question. Here, here anyway, come the questions. People are asking. Who's watching. I shout normally. Eddie doesn't, but Eddie's an MMA guy. So when he sees the other guy, Yanni, come on, Yanni. You know, <laughs> I smash this boy. Then he gets all Yanni. Mashallah. He here, loves that behavior. Here, here He's come very the, happy today because his his other boy got smashed by Dustin Poirier the Diamond. Smashed hardcore. So Eddie's happy. I'm happy. But my point is, is everyone who's watching this, we love each other. The actual yes. pre-lectures yes. are important. My lectures that on this, you will realize that I'm not pro-vaccine, that I'm not pro-medicines. I just believe pro-evidence. I believe that vaccines are safe on the whole. I believe and trust the, the regulatory agencies in general. I know that there's corruption. I know that there's problems. I know that there are uh, 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 deficiencies in every area. Testing, PCR testing, right? We know that they are super sensitive, producing so much results that you can't depend upon. The results that, the, 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 the source, it is the irony. That's a fact, what I just said. You agree with that, don't you? Okay, I agree with that. Here's the irony. The source and the authorities that gave us that information, the people suddenly ignore them when they say, but we should still continue with PCR testing. So it's like, ah, PCR tests, it's all false, it's all rubbish. Who told you that? Oh, the British Medical Journal. Oh, the Lancet. All right, let's go and ask them what do they say about using it. They say, well, you should use it. Okay, let's ask them what they think about the vaccine. Yes, we encourage all people to take the vaccine. We're well, ignoring that part, but you're focusing on the PCR testing being unreliable, etc. Yeah, you know what I'm trying to say? If this is a this is a discussion that needs to be brought back down to how yeah. we deal with evidences, and that's the reason why Muslims yeah. Muslims are failing in this, Eddie. And this is where I want to. Start bringing it to a close, and I want you to come in with your quick, quick, quiet answers. Quick questions. Yeah, let me get those questions. And I give answers. Yeah. Our bigger problem is that the Muslims have forgotten how to deal with evidence. We are people of evidence. We have, for our our entire history, dealt with evidence that suggests one thing, and then a consensus which it suggests something else, and then difference of opinion, which is 50-50, and you know specific positions from specialists versus generalists, traditionalists versus contemporaries, etc., 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 etc. Our dean teaches us key principles and methodology on how to deal with all of this. It's because Muslims are so far away from their religion that they are unable to deal with data, not able to sift through statistics. statistics, statistics. They're not able to understand who are authorities. And once they go back and apply basic Islamic principles, they realize just how untenable the movement, which is whether you call it in a pejorative term, anti-vaxxers or whatever you want to call them, those people who are denying this or, or reducing that or trying to create conspiracy theories, whatever, you'll realize why that's completely untenable from a practicing, solid Sunni Muslim. Go ahead. Here, here are the questions. What would poison control 
tell you if a parent fed their child some of these toxic ingredients every two months like they inject in DPT and other vaccines? It would be completely unacceptable and haram if the evidence supported it. The evidence in our current vaccination schedule does not support that. Explain the difference between ingestion and injection. Uh, in terms of ingestion Islamically or, or just... Or the medically? question here is like, you know, when you go through like aluminum, let's say it goes through your mouth and some food... Yeah, the around. idea that people will say no problem being injected with aluminum because we eat yeah, aluminum. Uh, injection aluminum injection state. versus inje yeah, very ingestion. That. Correct. There is absolutely no doubt. That's the whole... Going point. through God's system. So you have God's system of elimination, but now you, that, when you uh, inject... No. <laughs> No, uh, Eddie, don't go down that line. But because you know what I'm saying? Not, you know, yeah, Allah put the course, kidneys, Allah bring, put the system. Eddie, be careful. Don't bring God into it. I'll tell you why. Because okay. that would suggest that Allah has forbidden injections, which of course he hasn't. Right? No, no, no. I'm not saying. So, no, 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 no. Yeah. But that's my point. But what they're there's arguing, no they're arguing thing, is. There's, not, there's no such thing as God's system. This is God's system. Everything. Right? Yes. God, yes. God's system is not just through here. Yeah. Right. So I know, <laughs> I know how you, you went there. You got a bit excited. That's okay. But the point is, is that all of it is system. But your pr primary argument is good. It, it, uh, we should not be testing. And that's why it is a weak argument. It's not a very strong argument. And I, I know I put my hand up. I've made that point mm. before. That from your di dietary ingestion of aluminum, aluminum, aluminum. We say aluminum, by the way, right? Mm. Aluminum. That it is not comparable to direct into the bloodstream, straight possibly going to the brain. There's no, there's no, there is no, there is no actual comparison. They're two different uh, 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 routes. So what should be the comparison is the data. The data that shows the, the, the after effects, the side effects, the poisoning of that level of aluminum going to the brain via injection. And the data does not support that. It is as simple as that. Do you, know, you, do, you, do, you, do you know about the toxicologists? Uh, they've done extensive do. work. Chris, uh, Chris uh, Exley and Ashley Everly, uh, the fact that Alzheimer's patients and autistic patients both have one thing in common aluminum in their gut and brains and you can see their their studies do you know about this you don't have to come if you know, don't i i know about this and you know what the great thing about this particular study is that you don't even need to know a single thing about alum aluminum or about science or about anything to know that al -Hiram and alzheimer's and senility and the increase of this problem is occurring in communities that don't even have access to aluminum, let alone adjuvants, let alone injections, let alone anything of that. So that's just got to be said. Now, back to the previous point that once we open the door to Diet Coke, bro, okay, you should expect absolutely everything to go wrong with humans, human beings. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm very serious. I know people will find that funny and even I, I make jokes of it, but it's true. The modern world, right? I, I actually support what these folks are saying, right? And I really, you know, I'm a massive Joe Rogan fan, for example, right? He's something that I'm sure that you listen to because obviously, you know, you've got your, your, your the halal version. Did you see okay. him once wearing a Red Zivik t-shirt? I don't know. If I, have, I have, I have, I have, I have, I have. He's got pros and cons, right? So, just, you know, it, you know, you know what kind of things that he does, which are disgusting and haram and all the rest of it. Doesn't mean we throw away the good stuff, right? Okay. Yeah. And my point is, is that our Islam teaches us that it's good to be taken, bad to be taken. If you've got a person, you know, uh, 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 there's a lot of the American culture that I've learned from him. Because he is obviously a wealthy man, he's got access to doing certain things in his way of life that, we, that other people can only dream about. Living off the land, living off the grid, living X, living Y, blah, blah, blah. My point is this, that once you open that door to unhealthy living or to eat like the masses do and the public, whatever, I have no doubt whatsoever that we're all going to fuck. I think I'm suffering from Alzheimer's now, bro. And I'll blame this damn flipping Diet Coke right here, okay? I'm addicted to the stuff. That's why I couldn't care less what's in a vaccine. I'm going to be straight out to you, bro. If you want me to give you the emotional argument, the lay people argument, that's the reality. Once yeah. you've opened the door to Diet Coke, the most horrible, disgusting, infected yeah, anything in human history, right? And you're, I, I'm expected to worry about what's in the so, vaccine. So if you stay away from Coke, then stay away from vaccines. That's what you're saying? Absolutely, man. I, I told you, even that's a very high bar. Here's the next question. Look, Shay, uh, we're I've almost done. For you, man, by the way. I've got a gift for you. Have you seen this? That's a vial with the, what is that? Yeah, it is indeed, bro. That's for you, man. That's for you. Only to put it up and to put it on your da your dartboard. Do you guys know, you have darts? Uh-huh. You know what darts is? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So you can put it there and you can just try to crack it. What, what's that one? Is that the, is that the, uh... The Pfizer BioNTech, yeah. Yeah. 
empty, by the way. Otherwise, it'd be worth a couple hundred pounds, yeah, and illegal as well. In right, pharmacy well. school, they learn that there are toxic chemicals that they need protective gear to handle. So the question is, why is it then that these toxic chemicals are okay to put in vaccines because into, ti into tiny okay into tiny babies and ingest and take in? Next question. Okay, why is it that U.S. has the highest number of vaccinated kids and yet has the highest number of infant deaths? Yeah, that is, bro. This is it. Now. That's a quality question, right? That's a quality question with answers that go way beyond the scope of this program. We should be asking ourselves, when we look at the death that it, deaths that is being compared to in another country, for example, how is the reporting of those deaths being uh, 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 occurring in said country? Like, for example, Pakistan. If we were to take any, a city and say 100,000, and we see the amount of kids that have died, Right. What's the reporting like? How is the actual figures comparing to, Amer uh, you know, the ones that are America, uh, American based? You see, here's the problem. Americans have created their own problem. Like, actually, you know, everybody hates Donald Trump, but the guy come up with some pretty quality statements, very, very true ones. And everyone ridiculed it. For, everyone, everyone ridiculed him for, for it. Like last year when he was saying that the reason that we have the greatest number of infections is because. What did he say? Trump? Yeah. The reason, I, I forgot, what did he say? Because we do the most amount of tests. Okay, because we're doing the most testing. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Right. Yeah. So, that's true. People were, were ridiculing him for it. But it's true. If you have a system, yeah, do you honestly think that in Pakistan and in X and in Y and in all these other countries, which I speak to regularly and they're like, what corona? What are you talking about? You know? Do you honestly think that they've got no infection there? Do you honestly think that there is nothing there? But people don't care about it. People don't test for it. People can't afford to test for it. People don't have the time to test for it. People don't care for the testing. So when it comes to numbers and figures, there's far more questions that need to be asked as well. So when you say the highest number, first of all, I wouldn't accept that. I, would, I don't want to rubbish this data. I, I, I find this particular area fascinating. I want to know, though, is that how are we measuring that against other countries in infant where infant mortality is of higher numbers, but the classification for the cause of death and registration of death is in question. Just like, for example, the number of people who die. So in America, there'll be multi-thousand every day at the moment, okay, that are dying out of COVID. You know and I know that the system that, that designates a person to have died of COVID is full of problems, right? In the UK, it is... Any death that occurs within a 28-day period of someone returning a positive COVID test. You know that, right? Go ahead. You're miles away, aren't you? You're absolute miles away. No, I no, love no. it when the person's eyes are just miles away. It's okay, Eddie. Re Back with me now. Yeah. Back with me here. That is a problem. If you're saying that a death rate, a, 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 a death is being ascertained as COVID because he died within 28 days of a COVID test, yeah. you can understand that that's a problem. At the same time, what's the alternative? What's the alternative? You can either go full the other side and say, well, let's not do any testing whatsoever and just write it off as overall deaths. And some countries are doing that, right? So they look don't they don't look at COVID deaths. They compare the previous year's death rate for that month. They look at this year's, uh, this month, this year, and the discrepancy, they're putting that down to, and they, they, they make an estimate, the algorithm makes an estimate of an increase in car accidents, an increase in domestic abuse. And then they look, and then the rest, the difference, they're saying yeah. that's COVID. So that's the second approach. You can see the problem with that as well. Then you've got the other approach, which is, no, every person who dies upon death, we're going to do from their bodily fluids a COVID test. Bro, these people can't even breathe in the intensive care units. I'm talking about the staff. There's no time. There's no nothing. They're not going to be testing every single cadaver that comes off the intensive care unit. So, you know, sometimes people try to cause a problem when it's not even there, where, where the solution is not easy. The situation is not easy. There are problems all over the place. It doesn't negate the issue, it, the, 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 whether we say a thousand people died, 15,000 people died or 600 people died today of COVID, it will not change that our intensive care unit beds, our staff, our doctors are in absolute crisis, that the nurses are absolutely in tears. They cannot, they're all depressed. They're all seeing dead die every single day. They cannot change the fact that I went to the graveyard and that I expecting three get burials, saw 18 bur burials and the next day, 18 more. That is not a, 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 a fake. The person who does that is someone who I trained. He is making it clear to me that on a this year, last year, year before, this is what the numbers are. 
suddenly as a result, when what he lied and their symptoms lied and the fact that their whole family is infected, that's a lie as well. And this person, he couldn't breathe and he died. That's a lie as well. And the positive PCR result, that's a lie as well. And the guy who's burying the body, that's a lie as well. This is yani, going to cause a major problem for the Muslims when your aqidah is, is so uh, 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 dismissive of factual realities. This is what creates cults. This is what skepticism, when it's taken to its wrong level, creates. Yeah. So this is yeah. the reason why yeah. I came on this uh, program, yeah. bro. To make Muslims realize that you cannot have this approach to life. You can't. Sorry, yeah. A uh, couple more, a couple more questions. Here. Uh, some of these uh, you might have answered already, but if you did, um, tell me. It, it says safe and effective. How are vaccines safe if over 4.6 billion have been paid out in damages from the vaccine injury because compensation? Because the definition of safe is yeah. based upon a percentage. Because of course, if you talk about taking, let it, me just finish the whole question. It, let me finish the whole question. Yeah, let me finish the whole question. Uh, compensation program and the inserts themselves indicate a long list of side effects and risks that include brain damage and death. How? How? how I, I, I'm almost done. Ask how do vaccine companies check the safety of vaccines? Keep in mind that they have never done a double-blind placebo study. So what are they using as a placebo? Okay, so that's no, the whole no, question. First of all, that's a complete nonsense. The, 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 the last, just, the, just these three vaccines, you can see who took the placebo and who didn't take the We're placebo. This is a general, just vaccines in general. Yeah, Before, but so it's obviously wrong, that part. about the, Which the, part is wrong? Use placebo. Which the, part? They didn't use placebo. Of course they used placebo. And then so it, it says they are using vaccines or adjuvants such as aluminum. Keep in mind, they are using vaccines or adjuvants as aluminum. The definition of placebo having no aluminum or not aluminum are you no saying, impact upon are you the saying, definition. That's, are a, you saying, that's a different argument. Are you saying like MMR, DBT, all these, they do a double-blind placebo or they don't? Double-blind trials on yeah. vaccines, okay, today. Let's talk about today. Yeah. That are, that are put, if they do not use placebo as their fundamental uh, trial, it's not a trial. What are you testing? If you don't have a control, I think here, here is where, anyway, that, the, like I said, that's just the end part. I don't want to ruin yeah. the point. His point. The, but, the so you're saying was, this is how this can is, you say something is safe? Okay, here, how do we? This is a good point right here because one side is saying that, uh, for instance, I can. This is an independent organization. They've sued actually the companies to show these tests. Uh, and they they're not using it. You're saying they are. So here we got someone's lying. So this is like, how do we? Because one side is saying everyone. I, I, I don't even. Under, you know, on January, there's no double blind placebo. I don't, I don't. I don't. I don't understand. Unless we're basically saying that every single person is lying, right? Like every person involved, every scientist. What if it's proven to you? If it's proven to me that there was no placebo involved. In MMR in, in, or, D, or any of these? In, 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 the, in the Pfizer, in the, in the, in the Moderna. Uh, let me just give you an example because very painfully, I watched the Independent uh, Council of Advisory to, to Vaccines go through the, the data and I went through it yeah. literally with them. If you're telling me that every single person involved, from the scientists to the company to the... No, I'm not talking about... No, we're not talking about this new vaccine for the... We're talking about the, the MMR, all these other... Historically, I don't know. I, I, I don't know of every single study having gone through... Uh -huh. uh, so the... the so uh, I don't... I don't. Sorry, let me repeat, repeat. I do not know the intrinsic details of every clinical trial that supported the license of each individual vaccine. I don't. But as a standard, as a standard, you would think a there's standard, a double... As of course, they are used against placebo. Of course, because just use... Okay, I, I, I have to go... Cross. So you're saying they are, and I get, so you're, I'm So I'm going to go back and look what's their evidence, and then uh, this will be like a virtual... Uh, yeah, know, yeah. Like I said... Where I'll show I your video, know. and then... Know. Okay. I, I, All right, I let's go from know. next one. Okay. How are yeah. the testings for efficacy? For instance... Just, just, just on that point, let me just yeah. also, also make, a, make, a, make a point here. Sometimes we can also get a bit lost on this, right? So let's imagine. Let's imagine that, uh, and, I, and I want to make it clear, I don't know. Let's just say the MMR or small packs or small packs or whatever, something previous in history, because I know for certain that these one went against placebo. Yeah. But let's just say that in, histor in, in a historical case, uh, there was a vaccine that didn't go against placebo in its testing and it does that to make sure it's efficacious and safe. That's the reason, right? Yeah. That's the reason you use a placebo to prove that it works and that it's safe. You agree? That's the gold standard, yes. That's right. Let's say now you, 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 you falsified it or you didn't use it or whatever. And then it comes out and it works. And the data shows it works and it's safe. 
even if we assume, if we, let's just use MMR for an example, and we was to assume that it's true and it's not, the claims of the figures of autism as a result of taking it. But let's just say that we assumed it and we looked at the numbers and we created the percentages and it showed that 1% basically come out with a risk of this, okay? Then, frankly, whatever they used in the clinical trial doesn't matter because if it's now been going for 10 years, right? And you have hundreds and millions now in your cohort study as opposed to 40,000, your clinical trial, and you are now monitoring all of that and your data shows that the rate of measles, mumps and rubella has absolutely plummeted and it is now very low risk, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the number of autism cases increases by a percentage and then you work out the sums, then it actually doesn't matter. Now that doesn't support the idea you should now go and make drugs without placebo, but it means that whatever happened historically, here they caught a good bullet, you know, they, they, they got away with it. The only thing that should concern us is now in the current system, any company that wants to prove its point is going to obviously have to make it work against placebo. Now, when it doesn't, it doesn't mean that it won't work or it's not safe. It just means that there's going to be far too many questions. Like, for example, Moderna. What a complete shambles of a clinical trials process. And uh, 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 Oxford AstraZeneca as well. They know for certain that us lot, ethnic minorities, okay, Pats, Black, all the rest of it, we definitely have a bigger problem with, with COVID than our white, you know, Anglo-Saxon counterparts, okay? And yet, we, we, would be we became a tiny minority of the clinical trial cohort. It would have made sense that there'd be more, so there'd be more greater data. This is killing far more elderly people than it is younger people. So you'd expect more elderly to be involved in the cohort. They weren't. So that shows the poor quality, or we can make excuses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not supporting all the clinical trials and giving them, you know, 100%. As a, as a whatever. But at the end of the day, the data shows that they are safe, efficacious, and so far, so good. Long term, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Yeah. No company is going to say they're 100% safe. No person who's a healthcare professional should say that as well. There's always possibility of side effects, X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. And if you're drinking Diet Coke, don't ask what's in the flipping vaccine. A couple more questions. We'll come to a close. So you mentioned safe. Now, the next one is on efficacy because we hear it's safe and effective. So the question uh, starts off, how are they testing for efficacy? For instance, the Royal Medical Journal indicated last January 2020 that the HPV vaccine has never been tested for efficacy, yet they are vaccinating everyone. Additionally, vaccine inserts indicate the vaccines have never been tested as a carcinogen, even though they contain carcinogens and have never been tested to see if they, uh, they cause infertility. Ask him to define efficacy. So absolutely agree. Efficacy, and that's one of the problems with um, uh, uh, that's one of the major uh, valid claims against the COVID trials, right? Um, they've said that they're efficacious, that the drug is efficacious 95%. But 95% against what? And you'll see that they say serious illness, right? Or serious symptoms. And there'll be people that will argue that that's just unreal, that's uh, uh, not accurate enough. That's a valid point, right? How much better do governments and authorities want the people to be to give the the, the the companies the 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 the, 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 the what the um the framework on which to actually test their their products. Do they want a complete ridding of their disease? Do they want what we call sterilizing immunity, which is that you might get you know better yourself, but I just don't want to infect anybody else. At this moment in time, all of the vaccine companies have said we do not know, we didn't test. So I agree entirely. The efficacy is based upon the definition that the community, the authorities, they all come to. These are our expected goals. We just want people not to die, or we just want people not to have hypoxia, or we just want people not to have long COVID, or we just want... So that's a big discussion. Completely accept that point. You, you, the point before it was what? In the beginning of the question. That the uh, Med Royal Medical Journal indicated that uh, January 2020, that the HP vaccine has never been tested for efficacy. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Yet you know they are vaccinating is? everybody. I want every bit of data on the world to say that the HPV vaccine is a disaster. But don't, yeah, but that's me emotionally reacting yeah. because I hate that idea. But go on, yeah. Okay, so now uh, we're coming to an end. That's it. Uh, just uh, you're familiar with Andrew w Wakefield. If I was to get him on the program, would you have a. a no, a hundred you grand. Okay. Put it on the table. Okay, that answers that question. I will pump you know, but Andrew the reason Wakefield I mentioned and his dad. Do you, <laughs> you know Andrew Wakefield, right? I don't know him personally. I, no, no, I'm saying you know that character. the study that he didn't say that uh, vaccines cause autism, but he had 12 autistic children and he found inflammation in the gut, 
And then yeah. they, cru then, then because doctors use this every time. And I, and I heard your video saying that there is definitely no link between autism and, and, and there is and definitely no statistical proof that from one in 10,000 in your, my generation to one in 34 in the vaccine generation. Why did food allergies suddenly appear in 1989? They're all coming from vaccines. And by the way, right. it's not just me saying it. All those 400 diseases that suddenly became epidemic after 1989, every one of them is listed as a side effect. That is free of, of a number of factors that creates that link. That is my scientific opinion. And Allah knows best. Because once you base your opinion on statistics, yeah, there's always a possibility. Always. You have the swelling of the brain, the medical term, the long-term uh, cephalitis. Uh, that's on the insert. So that equals autism, doesn't it? And Not necessarily, no. Not every swelling creates autism. I mean, obviously, they know that. Um, listen, there's no doubt. There's no doubt that... How do, how do you explain this? When the vaccines went up to 76 doses, we saw all the chronic health issues. Also, autism just exploded. The same way I said about an hour ago. I completely agree with this. Okay. I completely agree with their point, your point, that we live in a world now where we have, and it will be completely disingenuous to try and make out that it's vaccines that have caused this. It's the modern world, bro. It's a developed world, bro. It's our diet. It's the way that we live. It's our approach to hygiene. And would I remove, would I remove vaccines from this? Absolutely. Like That's that. fair. You're being fair. That's, you're not saying like some people, they say absolutely no, not. Once but you start dealing with artificial products, once you start dealing in synthetic so, products, once you start dealing with, you know, things that are created in the laboratory, you're obviously opening the door to the unknown. Okay. Now we can. So I want you to understand. Listen, Eddie, listen, all of your people need to understand that people who are extreme on either side, you know, everybody can see them for a mile off. They just they don't know what they're talking about. Muslims need to appreciate that life is all about mitigation of risk. Our Islam teaches us that as a Muslim, you look for as much benefit as possible and you minimize the harm. That you sometimes are put in a situation where you even have to take a harm and in that scenario, you take the lesser of the two harms. And this is a basic approach. All of life is mitigation of risk. We do not, when we give an apple, say that, you know, don't enjoy this apple, there's a risk of death. We don't go going out for a walk and say that there's a one in 300 chance that you're going to fall and you're going to kill yourself. You say, enjoy your walk. Yeah. That's what we say. Let what I'm trying to say is that when we take medicines, we should also put that as part of the general principles of life. Am I happy that we have created a world where we are dependent upon medication, where it has lowered our threshold to pain, where it has had a mental effect, it's had an internal effect? Am I happy? No, I'm not. I decided against myself when I had the COVID injection, the Pfizer one, last Thursday, my arm was killing. Absolutely killing. That Thursday night, that Friday night, me being a hero, I was like, no. You know, they were saying, take the paracetamol, take the cocodamol. No, because I don't want to lower my pain. I've already injected myself with something that's contaminated to a monkey and Bill Gates is going to know about it. I don't now need to also reduce my threshold as well. So I said, no. You know what it is? I put up with it. It killed me on Saturday. And then by Saturday night, it was great. And my arm is not hurting anymore. There are some people that are going to say, I don't want to touch or feel pain whatsoever. And they actually, before they take the vaccination, they take the paracetamol before so that it can actually cover the period of any even appearance of pain. They don't want to go anywhere, anywhere near that. There's a problem there. Just, just with the paracetamol taking about the, the, the lack of exposure the tough circumstances which a Muslim is not trying to or shouldn't be trying to avoid in its entirety. So there's many deeper ethical, moral questions about the philosophy of medicine and vaccines, let alone the scientific discussion, let alone the Islamic fiqh discussion, let alone the aqidah impact. Yeah. As I said to you, the reason I came here is because Muslims have now started to turn into conspiracy theorists where their skepticism has now dominated their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and tuatu and unanimity and ijma. And that's a problem. Since you mentioned this term, we're done, but uh, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. It's a shame we have to just repeat that. But you know when this term was actually coined in 1974 when people were questioning the Kennedy assassination to get people from, you know, questioning. But you had our friend Yasser Kardi. You know Yasser Kardi. He was talking about the... The German parliament was bombed. The parliament was bombed. A fire was set up. Hitler immediately said the Jews did it, instantaneously. The public ran with it. The perception was that this is a Jewish plot. 
And because of this one incident of bombing the parliament, Hitler asked and was given unilateral powers. Like what happened 20 years ago in our own country because of one terrorist attack. You do have things that are happening out there in the world. I have no problem. Listen, man, I don't know. A conspiracy theorist itself, it depends upon the conspiracy, right? It's a good phrase or not. I don't mind being called a conspiracy theorist about those things which are to do with American policy, for example. Uh, foreign policy. Look at Iraq, for instance, and you know the, exactly. the fi you know five five hundred million. Based upon your definition of what conspiracy means. Yeah, and you know that the five hundred they had the Pentagon spent five hundred million to make fake terrorist vid videos, you know, to make us look like terrorists and that, you know, and whatnot. Yeah. So you have things. These are conspiracies that yeah, happen. Yeah, we, you, people you know? would call that a conspiracy. It's actually yeah. fact. Yeah, you know my new slogan. Know. You know my new slogan. What's and your also, new slogan, bro? What's my your slogan? Because they the say never. Joe Rogan. No, they say never forget. And I say because every time that year comes around. Uh, we're Mus ah, more Muslims also, where Muslims also die, say never forget Islam and Muslims had nothing to do with 9 11. Stop okay. using us okay. as the scapegoat, all right? Okay. Let me just finish, okay. let me just finish, let me finish here. When you mentioned consensus, it just stuck in my mind. You know, when we look back, consensus, we look at uh, at one time there was a consensus with doctors who were smoking and they were promoting cigarettes. That cigarettes. The consensus around vaccines is just like tobacco science. You know, would, would, would we have fought for tobacco science? There was a time when every doctor was saying smoking cigarettes is good for you, or at least it's not bad for you. I mean, that, that existed, and the industry was just paying for tons and tons of science to be done that supported that issue. That's what's happening in vaccines. And then you had a small group of scientists like, like you do today who are fighting the consensus but then they actually won you know but you oh had the God, you had by the way i wish you do use a better example bro okay I next exa any point in history that the consensus was that the cigarettes were okay bro come on then you had in the modern schooling in the universities there's a consensus that there's like no god you know what i mean so then i how don't know do we... about that bro come on man you're using some weak examples is there, it bro. come on Bro, then you had the Constitution. America, man. Let me try There's more. So many, you had Imam so Imam, Imam in let me finish. You had Imam idea. Imam Imam uh, Imam Humble uh, uh, who was on the who was by himself and the consensus around you know the people of his time. So that's so from every two thirds of the the Constitution had the two thirds the black man was two thirds of the white man, right? So yeah. you had at the one time you had a consensus that were fighting the Muslims saying that Islam is false. So we always had and Allah tells us in the Quran doesn't he that, that you know if you follow the majority most of the time you're gonna be, you know, right. so right. now you do have, you do have small groups at times. There you had you understanding had, to what consensus means. So there you do a, have even scientists at one time, a, uh, Galileo, a, Galileo, Galileo, right? Let Galileo. You, let me help. Let me help you. Yeah. So as you as get Abdullah that point. Bin, you get the point, Abdullah, right? As Abdullah bin Mas'ud said, the truth is the truth, even if you are alone upon it. So, so like I said, there is no hiding. Muslims don't hide yani, the, the, the principles. The idea is that there's no doubt a definition of consensus, that there is something called a silent, silent consensus, that there's a, 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 an active one, that consensus can change, that there are certain voices that if they go against the, the, the expected opinion, is that then called al-aghlab al-jamhur or is that ijma? These are technical discussions. What they do not, what they do not affect is the, is the consequence when there is tawatur, when there is a... A, an unacceptable possibility or the, an impossible uh, 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 reality of everyone colluding together to try and pull the wool over someone's eyes. And as I said, when you take that path, it's a very dangerous one. And that's why I just want to come on here to the Muslims and say that, you know what, it's far better for you to, you know, if you're worried about your kind of situation, then don't take the vaccine. No problem. But protect your aqidah where you start to question absolutely every single person and every single thing. And likewise to those who are pro-everything, be very careful about that. That your aqidah is not affected by your scientist or scientific or by your social or by your news-based decisions. Because it is yeah. happening. We're Muslims, ones who have, uh, by definition, submitted our will to the creator of the heavens and the earth. For those watching who are not yet Muslim, because everyone has the potential to submit to one and only one God. We love Jesus. As, as, as we love, love Jesus, that, as we love, love Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is one of the greatest messengers that ever walked oh, he, uh, on the earth, according with, uh, along with Moses, Abraham, and the last of the messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. So bringing this to a close, we're a holistic people. And in the Quran, which is the rate of God of God Almighty, based on proof and evidence, if we can agree on another thing, Sheikh, that in the Quran, chapter 2, verse, I think, 172, God Almighty is, is saying that um, eat 
O you who believe, eat of the good things. So if we can agree to this, that we can get Muslims to get those Coca-Colas out of the masjids, we can uh, stop eating fake food, eat real food, to support our immune system, the, 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 the gift that Allah gave us, that God Almighty gave us, to be able to, you know, uh, help us in these things. We don't, don't push away, obviously, medicines that are there, that, you know, the tire camel understand, but... But at the end of the day, to really, you know, live a holistic life and, you know, try to combat obesity and many of these chronic health issues by eating real foods, the Taibat foods, avoiding fake foods, you know, taking care of this gift, this vehicle that Allah gave us to get us through life. I mean, this is something that I, I try to encourage different scholars, sheikhs to, to kind of, you know, to talk more about this. You know, would you agree? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, eat from al-tayyibat. He didn't say halal. He said from al-tayyibat. That means the organic food. That means the healthy food. Yes, unfortunately, it means the expensive food in a lot of times, but it doesn't have to be. And the more that you hang around, and, you know, uh, I know that Eddie spends a lot of time on this, and, you know, I'm sure that maybe that's an area as well, Eddie, for our future show, how to make it affordable, how to make it realistic, and not just for folks in the States. In the international kind of, you know, communities, it's not an easy game, that, okay? And, uh, 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 and that definitely extends to medicines. And I wish, even as a pharmacist, I wish that we had a world that was less dependent on medicines. I wish that we could be that. And, and that's my general approach. And it's in line with my Islamic teachings. I very strongly hold that people are not here meant to live forever. I'm always being called, called all the time, Eddie. All right, let's put, cut the jokes. All the time, my father's on life support. Can I take him off? Take him off. My mother's on life support. We are not people who are dependent upon this life. We have somewhere to go. We don't need to remain in a decrepit state being fed and injected in IV, God knows what artificial life, in comas, this, that, whatever, whatnot. We are not meant to be relying upon these medicines to the level that we don't just tie the camel, but we strangle the damn camel and put him down in the ground. And, you know, there is a balance to life. Um, and very much I agree that we have created a problem with our approach to life, our diet, our medicine approach. And so if a person can avoid for themselves so anything, uh, not just vaccines, but anything synthetic, etc., etc., then so be it. But let me make it also very clear, as much as I love Eddie and as much as I love all the Muslims who may disagree with me, uh, these vaccines are demonstrably safe. They are beyond the, uh, the, the, the limits that we would consider where the risk of them is greater than the risk which is happening to those of us of vulnerable age in the West. Okay, I'm not that foolish enough to say that this is what people who are living in the East who don't even care about it, who don't need hospital beds, who are not dependent upon intensive care units that are not available for them, that don't have a life that depends upon that kind of reality, that are eating pure food, good food, that have good, good immune systems, that are not our vulnerable comorbidities, are not over 17, 18, 90 years old. But if you are, like in our communities, then it's something which I promote. I am willing to stand and accept its safety, and I will not you know, say that it is without risk. And that is with all medication, all food, you know, unfortunately, the way that we live our lives. But do I go back to what Eddie said? 100%. And this is the deen shown, so we should bring it back down to Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala absolutely promoting the halal and the pure. And we love the show idea, and we love the fact that we finally got on. Yani, uh, uh, you know, every time that you mention that we always worship Allah and we worship him like the prophets, I always used to get excited, man. I love that behavior. So I'm glad that you got those lines in, even in a boring vaccine talk, bro. <laughs> Mad love for you, bro. Thank you very much. It was really nice talking with you. Uh, we had a nice, healthy discussion. We covered a lot. We went way over time, but bro, a lot of information. Bro, you me two hours? You've murdered me here, bro. <laughs> it's 50 grand for this, surely. And then you tell the other guy 100 grand. I'm going to be a millionaire soon, bro. So I, I got to go back now to Dr. Sherry Tenpenny, and inshallah, we Put can... Put the money down. Put the reddies down. I'm going to share that with her, yeah. Shay, thank you very much. May Allah, God Almighty, the Creator Allah, bless you and your family. And, and... You as well. All right, take care of yourself. Shout out Just to like... Chicago, man. Shout out to Chicago. Hey, I'm teaching in Chicago next week, man. Oh, yeah, you got this. Uh, let the people know. You got a. a... Yeah, the fickle, actually, the fickle medicines where I teach people that you shouldn't be taking medicines willy nilly. That's actually part of the module of the class. It's the fickle of death, the fickle of sickness, the fickle of health. We go into organ donation. We understand what's going on there, all of this kind of stuff. It's being taught virtually. So almaghrib.org, check it out, Chicago. Chicagoans, Chica what, what do you call you guys? You guys? Uh, Chicago, Chicagoans. Take care, bro. Yalla, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum, thank you. Wa alaikum, assalamu alaikum. And if you like this episode of The Dean Show, like this video, share this video far and wide, and support us on our Patreon page so we can continue this work. Thank you for tuning in. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. Subscribe right now.